Hello everybody and welcome to the uh, the Dragons Rising discussion stream. This is just a random like we're just gonna be talking about the season, um, not doing much. Uh, and yeah, I got Kevin, I got Cheesy, and I got Kanye Crystal here, and we're just gonna talk about it. And we may have a surprise yeah. appearance later in the stream. Something something has been foretold. Um. So we'll see if that happens or not. But yeah, it was written in the scrolls. How is how is everyone doing? How is everyone feeling about uh, season two? I am doing good, and I love season two so much. <laughs> Me too. It's to totally. I uh, I can't I can't stop thinking about it. I I want to talk about it <laughs> really bad. I'm so happy, and I can't wait to see what's coming next for us uh i don't know what season two you guys are talking about all i all i've <laughs> seen is a pook rising <laughs> no, i was crazy uh, in season I... two when like lloyd got older i know i know i know it's crazy but uh yeah also chat let me know if the audio is good i did not get to do an audio test before the stream started so it's one of those types of streams you know <laughs> just let me know if the audio is fine hopefully everything is good it's like all the same settings from the last stream but uh yeah i don't even know where to start with season two honestly because so much happened and i think like the main thing i just want to get out of the way is the fact that like I kind of went into it with, like, I don't want to say I went into it with low expectations. Because the marketing, like, showed that, like, it was going to be pretty good. But, like, I feel like I went into it with lower than most. So, like, mm. I am very, mm -hmm. very blown away. I'm going to be honest. The quality. Probably, probably same to an extent. But it's because I feel like I'm in the group of people who... While I like season one in certain aspects, I might be on the more negative side of season one, I'm yeah. gonna be honest. I, like, I fight with myself on this all the time, because like, I should probably like this, but at least part one is special. But season two blew me away, so. Yeah, the, the pacing was top notch this time. Um... While I think uh, season one kind of dragged in a couple of places, this one had where episode by episode something new was happening, something new was being revealed. Mm -hmm. um, all of the action scenes were so well choreographed, and it felt it felt like it felt like season two, in almost every aspect, pushed the boundary of what season one had already shown us. And uh, I just, I just love it so much, and can't wait to see more and what they, what they have in their little hats that they're about to pull out. Indeed. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's. They took all the ideas that I was hoping they would expand upon, and they just took them way farther than I actually thought they would. Like the Aaron, Aaron angsting out about not having powers, Lloyd having like insane visions of, of like the future like all these different things that i was like they're cool but like knowing ninjago they'll probably touch on them a little bit but they probably won't be as explored as much as i'd want them to but no they actually went further than i thought they would yeah and sora becoming more uh comfortable with her powers yeah and mm. and how Aaron and Sora's dynamics from what we saw them in early season one about Sora not being uh, too into the idea of being a ninja and not believing that she is one of those things. And Aaron being so much of a fan of the ninja and who they are just being on like a downturn is such is such good character work and a very interesting route to go with these characters that I'm really excited for. And, oh! I, I love those two characters and their dynamic and what's coming so much. I think it's my favorite part, honestly. Um, yeah, it's... 
there's so much interesting character stuff and i think that's kind of the highlight is like this season is really like last season it was the highlight for me too especially with sora like just her whole story in season yes. one was like the best part and like i i wouldn't say i was more on the negative side of season one but it wasn't like a top five season for me it Not had like either. sure like it introduced like some of my favorite characters in the entire franchise but like in terms of the plots and in terms of the season as a whole I, it's not like a top five for me, but Dragons Rising season two so far, like, is definitely in the top five. Like, it is up there. Like, if I were to compare I, the first ten episodes of season two compared to the first ten episodes of season one, it, it is like a huge improvement in my opinion. Yeah, I feel like character work and just character dynamics are one of my favorite parts of Ninjago generally, and yeah. I feel like this season just takes it and pushes it like so far with almost every character. <laughs> To be honest. Yeah, like, like everyone gets scary, something. I would I would say, like, Cole and Zane just kind of feel like they're there. Yeah. But, like, it's not sure. distracting. Like, no. it's not and distracting. And what they're doing is interesting anyway. It's fun. Yeah. So yeah. And their fun. plots are fun. They don't have, like, a bunch of, like... I, and they're setting stuff up for Zane a little bit with him, like, being a robot. And they're, they're like, they're so mean towards him. Like, a lot of the characters, like, from the administration and stuff. Yes. And I feel like that's going to go somewhere at some point. But um, for now, Zane and Cole are just kind of existing, which is cool. Because, yeah. like, it, there's a lot yeah, of stuff every, going on. Yeah, every lore-heavy season like this definitely needs, like, a plot where it's just they need to get something. Yeah. And yeah. they're just howling around a little bit. And I, I really like that. It added a lot of levity. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like... It, it might have been just, like, too much if, like, Zane and Cole were also, like, having giant mental struggles yeah. this season. Because I, the whole point of their story is just to cut between the two so that you have, like, the A plot, which is really serious, and the B plot that's kind of more lighthearted. Yeah, Honestly, I think that's going to be Kai and Bonzel next season trying to get out. Yeah. Hmm. They're, I'm they're excited for that. Doing that. Yeah, they're doing that balancing act very well. I feel like I like that structure a lot because, like, even... The original show did that a bit, but not as, like, balanced, I think, as uh, this era is doing it with the A and B plot. So I really like that. Yeah. It feels a lot less... Because, like, in Dragons Rising Season 1, there were points where it felt like just too many... There were too many plots happening. <laughs> Yeah. It was yeah. Like, but I love the dynamics of each one, so I didn't have a huge problem with it, because they were all, inter like, entertaining. Just like a lot happening and this one it feels a lot more organized and just natural mm -hmm. and like the plots bounce off each other in good ways where it's like one is tonally different from the other that both complement each other so you kind of get the balance yeah of tones it's something like a season like the ice chapter i think could have benefited a lot from agreed but that's more. like part of the yeah. 11 minute issue yeah though, that's why 22 really minute episodes that. are so good so that. much better so much better because i'm so glad we're I... in this era of ninjago again yeah agreed what I like to point to is, oh god, I would never get the two names. It's like the, the, I think it's the newspaper one, and then the one where they're stuck in the pyramid in the fire chapter. And, um... The news never sleeps those, and, uh, and, uh, uh Zava. Zava, thank you. I'm bad at names. So those two episodes, it's like, right now, each other. But you, you could see them as one whole episode if they had structured it as a 22-minute one, but they really didn't, to be honest, so. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think I think if season two as a whole, like the twenty episodes of it, sticks the landing, it might it might stick like in the top three for yeah. me. Yeah, it's high. And yeah, it's it's like uh yeah, Sons of Garmadon and uh, Hunted and Seabound and Master of the Mountain and. Uh, tournament of elements it might stick like somewhere in the middle of those five yeah like it i, I have to wait for season like part two mm. to like fully yeah. know obviously but like it yeah. is up there for me like i it might mm -hmm. i don't know if it's recency bias or what but like i don't know i'm pretty confident that it's like it's pretty far up there because i i feel like i'm i'm someone who doesn't usually get affected by recency bias too much i'm usually able to sure like but like it's also it's always hard to say because things opinions change with time and i'm 
no stranger to that. So we'll see how I feel like a few weeks, months down the line. But right now, it it is up there. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah. Like yeah. Just everything they were doing with the characters, everything they were doing, the visuals like went absolutely <laughs> crazy. Dang! Oh like, my god. Probably, like, hands down the most beautiful looking Ninjago season from both animation, visuals, like, a directing standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like, some of the shots were really well done and interesting for Ninjago. Like, all the, all the like, um, visions that Lloyd had were really well done. Like, you'd think they'd what, get repetitive, what... but they made them, like, all interesting and memorable. Yeah, it makes, it's making me think of, like, what kind of one-shot fight that Wild Brain is so famous for doing for this show will look like in yeah. part two. It, 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 uh, I, I can't wait. I hope Everything we get one. Visually... I mean, we did. Didn't we kind of get that in the finale, though? We, we, got, like, we, we did, like, with the, did. We, with the fight what? between Kai and, and um, Cinder and then Roz and Lloyd. I love how that overlaps and yeah. it's one continuous shot. So, like, we kind of did get it. Just in a different format, it, instead of like a group battle against like a bunch of henchmen, it's like two, two one v ones yeah. clashing at the same Double time. Double fight, which is something so on cool. the equivalent of uh, the hoverboard scene. Oh in, my god, that uh... was so good too. Because like, because I knew when I saw that in season one, I was like, yeah, Wild Brain still got it. They just yeah. like either the budget's an issue, the the timing's an issue, or they're saving it. Yeah. And I think because of the, because it feels like the season got a pretty hefty budget increase, as well as just the animators might have just had more time with this season as well. And well, like, I mean, I think they're just more familiar. They're or they're more familiar with Unreal, yeah. 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 There's a multitude of factors that could have gone into why the season just looks even better yeah. than the first. New people doing like... the storyboards and the oh, yeah. writing. And uh, I think season one is like the like stomping ground for the new people that just came on and this is their efforts for working on it longer yeah. now and they having flex everything they've learned yeah. and yeah it, it came together really nicely i'm so excited to like because i feel like it's only going to get better from here mm -hmm. in terms of the like visuals. one of my issues with one of my issues with season one was just more so like how just more show how like the shots were directed during like the action scenes and such and like i guess like some animation like wasn't as good as like a lot of the other animation but like here i just feel like it's a lot more balanced and you know as you said it's a lot more well directed and i feel yeah. like there's a lot more memorable exciting and intense action scenes throughout uh the season yeah and even like compared to the 11 minute era it's like it's good in like a different way because you have the fluidity of it but it, but it's the directing i think that really sets it apart that i notice that makes it yeah, feel and... like really cool and really unique from most action yeah, and and 3D lot shows of... like this yeah and there's a lot of instances in the action this season that has a lot of weight to it yeah like um it's like the, feel anything impactful. Anything visually in an action scene with Cinder, mm -hmm. specifically, where Cinder, like, would grab Aaron's leg and toss him down, you feel the real yeah. weight of what that is. And even even with Wildfire's injury, too, mm -hmm. that was there. I was like, yeah, sh she's not recovering from that very soon. Yeah, even, I was surprised, because, like, I remember seeing the trailers, and I'm like, Cinder does not hold back, but I feel like even some of the ninja weren't holding back, too. Like, in the first fight with Cinder, like, <laughs> Sora, like, punches, like, the heck out of one of the guards. I'm like, yeah, no one's, oh, yeah. like, this is just, like, the animation overall. Like, a lot of the hits just feel a lot more impactful, and, it'll, like, it really sells, yeah, like, the even... skill of the fight, like, of the fighting. It's even in the text, there's someone that tells Sora, it's like, wow, you got some moves, Sora. <laughs> It's crazy. Just the, yeah, the action is the action is really fun. I think it's just I think the action's just more indicative of just how the story is just like okay, we've established these characters, we've established the war. Now let's let's not hold back. Yeah, let's absolutely destroy. Like season one, just like <laughs> set the groundwork so that they can just go crazy with whatever they want now, which is so nice. Like. Just so, just so the writers can beat the crap out of every character. Yeah, because you still, you, at the end of the day, you still gotta give a lot of credit to season one, even if like, 
even for those who might not like season one a lot like the reason season two is so good is because season one did such a good job of laying the groundwork that's true Mm -hmm. and like that's what that's what got me so excited about the idea of the seasons being interconnected and there being like overarching stories because that's this is the type of stuff you get when you have the time for long-term setup and we're still kind of in the setup phase like they're still setting up for stuff as we're getting other things paid off and it's just so satisfying to watch yeah and and even more so whenever the variety article came out with their uh with the interviews with the uh crew yeah um it it feels it feels so good to have these overarching storylines and really the things that i was excited about like aaron and sora's um relationship if they hadn't set up the groundwork that they did in season one it wouldn't have as much of an impact as it does to me for season two yeah that's why i feel like because like how how do you how do you all feel about like sora in terms of like her strength as a elemental master because i've heard a lot of complaints saying it feels too quick that she's like as good as she is but like i don't know i think season one did a good job of establishing her growing in confidence and then season two just being like yeah she's like trained a bunch and she's just yeah really good without making her feel too overpowered yeah and it i think it was set up by sora actively rejecting ryu at the end of season one felt like that was the springboard for Mm. that kind of payoff and she's more focused on her power instead of spin jitsu so, yeah, which is why she hasn't learned Spajitsu yet, and that gives her another challenge and another struggle to overcome at the same time. And it's not like she doesn't have any other issues anymore to face. And I mean, at the same time, like, yeah, you did have this big character arc where she had to embrace her powers, so she wasn't exactly the the most competent elemental master. But like once yeah. once she got through that, it makes sense why her why she would flourish yeah. flourish in her new role as Cause... Like the master of technology and such, and at the same time as well, um, I guess I would be worried. But after seeing this season, I feel like they did bring an e- like a threat that you know does that is a match for her powers and such. So yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, and it's not like Sora was. It's not like her problem was ever that using the tech was the issue because like when she could use her powers, she was already really good at it. And yeah. that's be- and they set that up really well because of like her growing up in Imperium and learning all this stuff and just being really gifted. So like I think it's fine. Like the the fact that she knows how to use her powers and being able to use them so like proficiently now it doesn't bother me at all. I think it. I think it no, works fine. especially especially with a time jump and yeah. uh, her being more considerate of her powers. Yeah, it really solidified I mean, that for me. I mean, we had a montage of of you know just the ninja being heroes so it's been a while since mm-hmm. yeah the first season also i think it's just interesting how like like um that uh social media ninjago thing that we got like a few weeks ago i, I think it's just kind of funny how we assume that was just like an extra yeah kind of yeah i didn't think that was an actual clip from the episode. but it's actual it's an actual clip of the season <laughs> I was yeah, so was surprised like, to see that too. Yeah, that like so whatever, funny. like whatever the elemental mech, uh, shorts came out. I was like, well, if that's teenage Ryu, then what's this Ryu here? Like, what's going on? <laughs> I think, I think if I had to pick one major complaint of the season, it would be like the time skip, like not the fact that it exists, but just the weirdness of like okay how long has it been and why does it why is it it not seem very impactful do we know that yeah there's like there's like yeah i will admit there is like ambiguity to it especially with like Mm -hmm. um you know because like there isn't much of a reaction with cole coming back to the team as well right yeah so it's just like it's it's it is kind of weird Sure. Like, it doesn't feel like it's been very long, but they present it as though it has been a long time. So it's just kind of hard to, like, feel the time skip. Yeah. And it's, especially when they don't really give us an idea of how long it's actually been. The only the only gauge we have is, 
Ryu's age, which is even more confusing because. Yeah, baby how, dragon how to teenage fast dragon is. is yeah, yeah like, we don't know how fast <laughs> this kind of no. dragon would grow. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is that is the main odd thing that like struck me as odd when watching the season at first. Yeah, and I will say I'm not happy with um like I'm not happy that Cole's reunion with the ninja was in the elemental mech shorts. Yeah. I'm not happy with that. Oh yeah. That I, I, like, will I know, agree I know, that. like, I'm pretty sure in a previous stream we have mentioned, like, if this is the reunion between Cole and the ninja, that is a bit disappointing. Yeah. Now yeah. that we, are, now that we have confirmation that the mech shorts did take place before the season, now I'm just. And the mm, fact that we still don't know, like, it was like, what he what did, happened. like, where yeah. he went, it, it makes him, it makes Cole feel like, like I said earlier, Cole just kind of feels like he's there, and the, that kind of stuff just kind of adds on to that feeling. He's and like, the, he's just kind of vibing, <laughs> and we don't yeah. really know what and he's up it, to. And bringing up my Cole and Nia bias, uh, Nia ended up talking to everyone already at the end of season one. It's like, oh, guess what? I found Cole, and this, this, and this happened, and the Earth yeah. was screaming. And uh, it, I feel the same way about uh, the Zane being in a pod and that yeah. hardly ever being brought up either. So I think that's like two of my major complaints about yeah. it. And I know they're probably setting up like the Zane reveal and all that kind of stuff for far out later. But like, sure, it it is odd that like these types of things like they're you kind of have to like with certain things like reveal them like hastily and not l let them yeah like uh but it's not like the writers long, but... have forgotten about but they haven't yeah they haven't forgot never... about it like i have faith that they'll nope. get around to it yeah because uh cole comes cole comes back to geo and the finders uh in the land of the lost things and says oh wh what did you find cole's like no time for that now i've got to protect you let's yeah. go let's do this oh so, yeah he said he'll tell them later Another yeah, weird thing about Cole of. is how so, like, he has the rock monster form, but he still he like uses the new mech because they have to advertise it for the sets. It's just funny to me <laughs> that like they're like the same and thing. It... It's just one has like cannons on it. Like yeah, then, um, then I will we're say a new I, I Cole do think. Mech soon. Yeah, I will say. I mean, I do feel like they will bring back, bring up what he learned in part two at, at the very least, since they did. You know, since they had pointed out, and you know, yeah, I, just feel I, like, I mean, the fact that they even brought it up in part one just makes me think they're just gonna look at it more in part two. I have a feeling, especially, we're gonna with, like, like, especially with like Geo and the group being at the monastery now, so I just feel like they're gonna have to talk about it. Yeah, and all the things with the administration, they're probably gonna hold back on too much administration things until season three. Yeah. Which makes sense. Like, That's my theory. With the whole J stuff, I don't think any of that needs to be this season because like there's already there's a lot going on, and I feel like the the way they've he's been definitely... pacing J stuff out is really good. Yeah, he's definitely going to be introduced in season two to the rest of the ninja. I think in a really compelling way because the only two people who the only person that actively has seen J that is in the characters that we know and that are palling around with the ninja is Bonzel. Yeah. And she's currently with Kai in a place that we don't know about. It brings it brings up that that J reveal is going to have a lot of weight to the characters that uh, have meant the most to him yeah. after 12 years of knowing Ninjago. They're building yeah, it up the really only two well. Characters yeah, the only two characters that have flashbacks and visions of Jay are Cole and Nia, <laughs> and I I'm so I'm good. so down for the angst. I can't wait. I can't, I love the fact that Nia's like Jay would never forget him, Matt B. I know it wasn't yes. real. Like that is you the, know what I like? that is like the best oh, foreshadowing. True. That is like a yeah, really good mm -hmm. example of foreshadowing in Ninjago that like, I feel like. Yeah, Nia really well being Ooh, being like the love of my life and then Cole's like yeah my best friend I yeah. wish that bonehead was here and those are the only two characters that have that foreshadowing going forward I'm so excited yeah I'm so excited I, I do think it's interesting how Nia is like the only one who isn't like 
that scared of the yeah of, like, it's the... so fitting for her she's just immediately yeah, picks up so on good. it she's like oh wait this isn't happening and i but at the same time though it's also very worrying to me because that means the writers know what they're doing yeah they're no. like, oh they know yeah. they know what they're doing no, with... no later <laughs> jay would never <laughs> forget me guys never forget me <laughs> they're gonna they're, they're gonna, gonna rip dude anyone who anyone who's super invested in yeah. jaya is gonna be in tears <laughs> absolutely <laughs> like, wrecked they're gonna rip out our hearts and i love stomp chaos on it. i love chaos so much and so like uh, on twitter like she like posted something that made me like want to crawl into a hole and die was uh somebody saying that Nia needs to have a scene with Cole like she had with Kai and Master of the Ma uh, March of the Oni. Oh, yeah. When, like, Kai is gone and Cole gets to be the person that says, hey, there's people around here who love, for love you and care for you and have that kind of parallel between those two characters. I, I, I think that would be sick. Yeah. I mm. need it. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff they can do from what they've set up, and it just makes me really excited. Like, I'm, I'm surprised about how excited I am to see what they do with Jay, of all characters. Oh. Like, it's, Finally. it's like, because I've been, yeah. I've always held out hope for good Jay stories, and it's like, it's, it's something like, I've been wanting for a long time. It, it's possible. And it's AJ. something, it's why the ending of Seabound made me so excited. So like, and then crystallized dashed off. Yeah. Hopes so it's dreams. like, it's so interesting that we're actually like, we kind of have hope for a J story again. And when I thought yeah. like that was long gone after they messed it up and crystallized. The thing about Jay is like he's not even. I know Jay is so hated now. I don't know what happened. I know what happened, but like, Jay is a character that has potential. He's not yeah. the best ninja, and. He was up there with, I guess for a bit, Kai also wasn't getting a lot for a while, but even he was doing better than Jay. But I feel like with this overhaul, they're going to be able to push him in a different direction other than, oh, I'm Mia's mm -hmm. boyfriend, and oh, yeah. I sure. am jokey joke guy, and also yeah. I have high voice. Those are his personality traits. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but the thing about it is I think uh, Wild Brain in, in that era was taking a lot of criticism that people had about Jay and Nia's relationship in general was mm -hmm. that like Nia didn't have a lot of agency as a character, you oh, know, um, being the person that was always meant to be saved, and now they did it in the opposite direction where Jay has to be saved from Prime Empire by just walking through a cabinet. Or Jay has to be saved by the Queen of the Months because she's being really creepy. Or Jay has to be saved because he just drowned because he just shot himself at Wojira in a car. So I... <laughs> <laughs> So now they have a more interesting dynamic where Jay has to be saved and has to remember, but he has that agency of like, I need to find out who I really am and get out of this administration thing and then remember who he is. That is such There's a good a balance too. And I I'm really excited for it. It it was like the it was like what I said at the end of the Cole and Nia video I made with you with a uh, UN. Uh, Kevin, Indeed. where, where it's like, uh, we need to stop damseling Jay. We need to, we need to stop it. We haven't fixed the problem. We just put it on another character, and and they have, and I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really interested. The only issue I have with the memory loss angle, like my only worry about it, is like, similar to the whole Ice Emperor Zayn thing. Like, if any story implications mm. come at the cost of it, like, okay, Jay's doing this, but not because it. it his character decided to because he has memory loss and he's being like manipulated to do it that's just not nearly as interesting to me as a character like making choices yeah. based on their own volition so that's like the only like thing i'm, I'm worried about is i just don't want to re mm. repeat of yeah, ice emperor yeah. zane it depends on they what things that, that they route. do with that because like i feel like some of it could be his own agency but i'm have a feeling some of it's not going to be yeah. uh -huh. So, yeah, I, I want my Revenge of the Sith theory to still maintain its ground. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, didn't... Are we allowed to talk about leaks on here? 
the the Lego league? Um, I mean, it's, it's which league? There's like ten million. I don't know. Like, uh, we had like a minifigure picture. Maybe I could uh, uh, ask. Uh, it's about the I don't know how widespread the leaks are in terms of the YouTube community. Because if this was like a Twitter space, yeah, I'd be okay. like, yeah, absolutely, but... Okay, but th there was another... Uh, oh, okay, well, I'll say that I day. feel like we're going to see Jay at least at some point in Season 2. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's my I Bailey theory. Too. I think they'll keep... I think they'll keep... Me, personally, I think they'll keep him in the background like they have been doing, but I think we will get uh, some kind of cliffhanger with him. By the end, yeah. that will insinuate more focus in the next season. Yeah. Do we yeah. talk about the Kevin and Doc video of the things that are going to happen? I'm sure I have not have actually seen, seen that. that. I actually, I, I haven't okay. watched it. I avoided like all the marketing for yeah, I haven't seen two, that. So either. I haven't even gone back and okay. watched any of the marketing. I mean, it's on YouTube Shorts, though. <laughs> no, so give me the clip. Like that is more reasonable. <laughs> okay. Now, all What's of the spoilers the... are bleeped out. Oh, so. Okay. Um, except for one of them, which is hilarious. Some it, intern was true. like, yeah, I can't wait to add Yeah, I think guys. I saw, I saw the... That. Wait, was it the wildfire one? The wildfire yeah. getting my boyfriend, yeah. <laughs> okay, for the that people so that funny. don't know, so... The people that don't know, like, uh, there was this YouTube short with Doc and Wyatt where they said, Oh, we're gonna give you spoilers. And then they say a bunch of vague stuff, and I say vague because they bleeped out the actual spoiler names and such. And in one of those things, they said, "Blank gets a gets a gets a boyfriend." boyfriend. Yeah. And if you look at the captions, or I I think they updated it now, but like when this video yeah. first came out, the caption said "wildfire." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which there's a chance that might Great. still be wrong, but it's 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 weird that you know, it's funny. Yeah. There's, so there's basically, the spoilers it's... were like this. So. Bleep and bleep get into a fight. Bleep and bleep. Uh, bleep gets on Roz's team and that freaks bleep out. And then bleep gets a boyfriend. The first That's one's definitely got. Aaron and Sora with the context we yes. have now. Well, yeah, with the context we have now, that one's definitely Aaron and Sora. And the second one, due to leaks, is pretty obvious as well. But since we're on YouTube, I don't, I don't know well. Yeah, we stuff, we won't do the but... leak, but I, I have a I have a feeling it's one particular character. <laughs> indeed, indeed. What do you mean, guys? It's totally Master Wu. He's getting a boyfriend. Oh, definitely. <laughs> ghost oh, Master Wu, not even real Master Wu. He's just still a ghost. Ghost Wu. How 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 we, how are we feeling about the possibility of Wu returning? Because in my opinion, I don't uh, want Wu I... to come back, but I think they're definitely setting up for it. They're setting I... up a comeback. I I'm, feel like I they are. They're setting it up. It, to I'm... me, it seems like they're hinting at him returning at, in some form. I That's mean, I feel the like the vibe I got. I... But I maybe I'm just worrying like... too. Maybe I'm just like worried it'll happen. So I I just want to know if he's a spirit way. or like a ghost or something. I, mean, uh, I don't. Yeah, he's... Is it like an astral projection? Like we're talking a Last Jedi stuff, or are we? <laughs> or is it just a the ghost? only thing I want to know is like if he is dead, like how did he die? <laughs> Good question. I mean, yeah. Other than that, I, I don't I'm know. Fine I with like what they're the, doing with him right now. I like the idea of Case the flashback more because it gives a uh, all the more ways to voice act, but like doesn't. Shoehorn yeah. Wu in, it, it does end up feeling like that. Like the scene with him and Bonzel is really good. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I I love Bonzel. Yeah, Bonzel. Bonzel is the I, best. I I love her. I love her so much. I think I think she's my favorite side character now. Ooh. Yeah, that's actually what it, I was it gonna used ask. To be, it used to be Fro Hickey. Now he's in second place. <laughs> can I say, can I, can I, can I say without getting without getting still the greatest character in fiction? Are you are you going to say that you're not a Fro No, Hickey I'm going to say no, no. I'm going to I'm going to go on the other side. I'm going to say that Dragons Rising side characters are better overall than than Eleven Minute Era side characters. Oh my god! I, so, so, I oh my don't god. know if I. The only exception is Benthamar. 
No, I'm sorry. I don't know if I agree with that still. I, yeah, I think that's a hot take for there's me. But like, you still have Vanya, there's Nikita. Yeah, I was gonna say I like Vanya. Bonzel has left Christmas way more of an impact on me than like there's... any of the wild brain or any of the, the uplay side characters. The uplay are pretty good. Yeah, the uplay. Yes. Like, but I feel like, like we need Geo... to more time. <laughs> I like I like I like the finders better than the uplay. <laughs> I like the finders a lot, but it feels like we've seen less of the finders than we did see of the uplay. The finders feel the, more like a family, yeah. like actual family to me. And like, yeah, the, the uplay were more important to Cole's story, and I could definitely see like why people would prefer the uplay. But like the finders, just I don't know. They're I feel like so I want to see more like the finders. I, I do like the family dynamic, and there are, and there are like distinctions between the characters with the finders. But for me, I feel like there were more distinct personalities in the uply. Yeah, I yeah. just feel like a lot of the uplay were a bit one note for me, and that's kind of true with the finders yeah. right now. But like Bonzel's really well fleshed out, and I feel like Geo, yeah. once he's fleshed out, like. Yeah, and then they like... revealed on Twitter who Fritz and Spitz uh, were. Like, um, Fritz being a fan of Fritz Donigan and oh, naming awesome. himself Fritz. Oh, that's cute. And then, that's awesome, yeah. Know. And then Spitz is a uh, play on his. Uh, how he is as a serpentine and that he's got a little spittle whenever he's kissing. <laughs> I feel like the finders have the capability of dethroning like some of the I love a minute wild brain era side characters for me, but I need more time with them before I can yeah, see, I see that. Like, I want another scene. Yeah, we we've only known like two of them so far. We we need to know about the other two. Yeah. And what, yeah. what we got from the other two was really cute. It was like, oh, they're just little tiny kids who don't know what they're doing uh, with the mechs and the technology. I want to okay. I want to see oh, Fritz. Because Fritz has the formling hat, but we haven't seen him True. actually yeah. transform. And he has, like, the markings. Yeah. Like, so we know he's found mm -hmm. his animal form. He just doesn't hasn't used it yet, which is interesting yeah. to me. And I wonder, like knowing Dragon's Rising, like because like with Bonzel, I was like, oh yeah, Bonzel's just like a random like joke side character that they're never gonna do anything with. And then like we got so much cool you stuff with Bonzel this season. So I'm like, now I'm like, man, I really hope we learn about the um the the uh, learn about more about Fritz and yeah. why he doesn't seem interested yeah. in using his yeah, animal will, form. Because uh, the fact that Doc was so like, oh yeah, this this person does this and this person does that. They've mm. already got things planned for them, too. Like, I'm kind of confident now that there's a reason yeah. that Fritz doesn't use his animal form. And I feel like that might yeah. be an interesting story behind that. I oh, love how... Oh my gosh, okay. like how he... Like, he can only go into, like, his formaling form, like, at some points. Or his, like, ceremony was, like, hotly contested. Or he was just rejected from that society in general, yeah. like Vex mm -hmm. was. Yeah, there's got to be some backstory there that I feel like one one of these days we may find yeah. out. Very soon, at some point. Yeah, because yeah. Dragon's okay, Rising is just so good at setting stuff up, and like this season Early gave me a lot. Of, this season gave me even more confidence that stuff that I think isn't important will probably be important. Yeah, that just shows how tightly written everything is too. Like that's, yeah. I was so surprised and. But, like, very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. You know, since we talked about the Finders, I feel like we also have to bring up uh, Cole, Cole X Geo. Oh, Geo. Yes, Geode is yes, my favorite please. Ninjago ship ever. Geo the truther. I'm not a right huge here. Ninjago shipper, but I love Geode so much. I also like, love they didn't even, even, I just, I just hear something that I find like so interesting. Like, um... Like, I just find it so interesting how homophobes are already mad, even though they haven't even confirmed Geo X Cole. And that's just because when you watch them together in season two, like, the way they are close with each Dude. other, the way they are just... The yeah. slow-mo shot of Cole with the music in the shot. background as Geo's remembering oh him. Like, God. you cannot it's take so that great. any other way. I'm sorry. No. Literally, someone, someone on Twitter said it best. There is no heterosexual explanation yep. for yeah. Geo no. and Cole in mm -mm. season two yep. of Dragons it's Rising. Like finally, there they is, love each no. other. It does not matter. They're finally, yeah, they're finally taking the fandom interpretation of the character and yeah. running with it. 
and I am so happy for that. It's so it's so good. And honestly, I'm excited to see if they're gonna like take it even further in part two, given how much we've seen in just part one alone right now. I'm just curious if they're gonna like. I have like, a feeling um, like sure. I think w whenever the time comes for more geo focus, will they'll get dive, like they'll dive deeper into their relationship. I don't know if they're ready yeah. to like tell the story right now in this season, but I think mm -hmm. if we get more on geo and we get more on Cole and what happened, then I think, they'll go further with it. I think this is I just think, the start. I, think, I, I feel I think like it's with uh, ahead over the tournament because that is true. Uh, because if there is a tournament of the sources and there's a tournament with all of these, oh, like like in season four, like tournament of elements where they have to fight, um, and they become like more worried about each other or more worried about who they're facing, mm. and uh, I I think I think that'll bring a lot of it out. I mean the fact that that. Geo is now with the ninja at the monastery does kind of mm. I guess point it to that direction there. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a boarding house now? We got Pro Hickey and the finders <laughs> it's and going to become a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> like um like Gandalorius you know, I, I feel like I feel like there. we will get like a I feel like we will at least get a geode moment when Cole uh, like because I feel like he will probably bring it up at some point in part two. So I feel like that'll probably be our major geode moment in part yeah. two. And that'll, yeah. I mean, I hope we get more. I'm just thinking, yeah. like, will they wait to, like, flesh out the relationship to when this, there's more room in the story for it? But, like, I, it's also hard to say where the story's even going in the next ten episodes. Sure. Because a lot like, can happen, like, as you've seen. The, the tournament thing throws a big wrench in it because, like, it's it's hard to say how that plot's even going to be set up as of now. I feel like until we start getting trailers and stuff, we're not really going to know the basic synopsis of the next ten episodes. So it's kind of hard to speculate. Yeah, what that's they sort will of nice, and won't have though, time okay. for. Because like it means that we're going to have a lot of surprises yeah. coming up. I think. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, no, they've done a really good job of just keeping the excitement rolling. Just letting each batch of episodes, like, neatly lead into the next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that stuff with uh, Aaron, Sora, and Wildfire. Oh my goodness, yeah. that That's really exciting. The whole Aaron, like, angst of the season was really interesting to me. Like, Pop, the yeah. thing is, before season two, Aaron was, like, a B-tier character for me maybe yeah he is like a he is like an s tier character right now and if they no keep same. going and if they keep going with him like it's hard because like sora's like my favorite but like aaron could overtake sora and i never thought that would happen but like it all depends on how they keep writing him and how they keep writing the two yeah. of them i guess yeah aaron like shot up through the ranks too for me and now yeah. he's sitting nicely next to wildfire because wildfire is still my favorite Sorry. It's so fun that like a lot of the complaints people had about Eren is actually like purposeful and playing into his whole arc. Because yeah. like I think what they're doing with him, I don't want to, I don't want to get too out of myself, but I think the point of Eren's story is to be like a subversive main character, and mm -hmm. to be like this is mm -hmm. like the fun, marketable new ninja that like that's all like like super like um like he's really funny and he's got all these quirky one-liners and he's like the successor to Lloyd and he's awesome and that's what they wanted us to yeah. think from the start but he's actually going to end up being like the most interesting and like nuanced ninja that his his like what we yeah. would think is his destiny is completely different from what we were imagining and the underlying subtext of him as a character is like a person like us being introduced to the world of yeah. Ninjago that they live in <laughs> And him being feels feeling so much of an outsider, um, really plays into all of it that was portrayed in this season. Yeah, like the scene with him and Roz in episode nine is such oh. a good scene, and the way that they just plant the seeds of like Roz being like strength is like much easier to master. I don't know if it's like much easier, but it's like it seems like the easier path for Aaron, right? If he wanted to become more powerful and if he wanted to prove to his parents that he was strong. And like mm -hmm. the idea that they set up the like the idea of like Roz 
potentially being like a teacher and and having Aaron like maybe go down that path. That's so interesting to me. Because it's something like, like I was thinking about the entire season, but once that scene hit, I was like, wait, this could actually be a thing that they do. <laughs> and we also there's also the comparison between their first fight and this fight as well, which I find interesting. Oh yeah. No, the way that like the way that they they have it so that like it shows that Aaron like really just has not made any progress since the first episode. And that's like mm. the point of the story. And that's like what's so demotivating only for him in the finale to think that he made progress. Like yeah. because and of what Sora, Sora being did. so comfortable with her power. Yeah. And what power she gained. And the fact that Sora's probably gonna learn Spinjitsu and make it even yeah. worse for Eren. Like they're like, yeah. oh, we work so well together. Like there's so much stuff in the season that's like positive stuff that you you watch and you're like i want to feel good about this but you know that they're just setting up for this to be like torn away like you you know like oh like with nia being like oh jay would never forget me or like oh we're so good as a team because i can use Vegeta to use these powers like it's like this false positivity that we know is only temporary and that's so interesting for ninjaga to have oh. like you know like these characters viewpoints are I'm just gonna so completely change that's... Yeah, the pieces are deceptively moving in a place where they're just waiting. They're setting up the curtains at only so they can rip it apart. Yeah. Like, it's the, it's the kind of writing like that that impresses me the most more than anything. And it's like, it's so even some of the best seasons too. of Ninjago have never had stuff like this, I feel like. You know, Kanye, the more I think about it, the more I feel like the, the Cole and Jay fight's actually going to be given to Aaron and Sora. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Good the Lord. Revenge of the Sith and, is going to be those. Two. <laughs> and then, and then I brought up not too long ago that uh, Aaron and Jay have a lot of similarities, a lot of parallels to each other. Um, the loss of parents is like I want them to be proud of me, you know, and I want to be impressive. But there's just these things that like keep getting in the way, and how upset I am. It, it's it's very much giving Skybound for me. Mm. Yeah. The kind of angst that Jay went through in that point was like... Yeah, because if Jay is actively like rejecting the powers that he has to stay in the administration, and Aaron wants to reject the idea of having powers, but just doing what he knows that he can do best, which is being a Spinjitzu prodigy. And the whole thing about Aaron finding his parents um, during the nothing space in the merge, in the merge quakes or whatever. And yeah, I, I, I hope those two plot lines intersect. At some yeah. Point. And like with a tournament angle, there's so much room to be like, like, I think I understand now why they're doing the tournament because like there's so many characters and the conflicts between them are, I think, what they're going to focus on for the next part. Mm -hmm. So having that be in a tournament makes perfect sense. If you want to focus on the conflict yeah. between characters and how characters have changed and how their viewpoints conflict each other, then put it in a tournament and that creates for the maximum <laughs> amount of angst and like yep. cool oh, action together. I love and that idea is really exciting to me. So. I love Ms. Also, Mix too. in chat I'm seeing a lot of talk about Cinder. What do you, what do you all feel about Cinder so far? He was pretty hyped up before the season came out, but I feel like I haven't seen much talk about him after. I like I him. I think he's a good foil, and he's interesting. I want to see more of him. Yeah. I think his entrance and... Um, and I think... Okay, so I think we need to talk about Cinder as opposed to Jordana. Right, right. Yeah. Mm. Because, because I think... I think it was like a scale because the first half of part one felt so much like Cinder was the one to like be the one to fight the most and the one to be the most worried about. And then by the time like episode five rolls around and Jordana's messing up with messing with the magic, it made her more of a palpable threat. So I think it's like. I think Cinder is better in the first half of part one as opposed to the second half of part one. 
and Jordana Jordana has like the vice versa effect where that's the opposite. Yeah. That makes sense too because the entire time they're fighting each other for who's the best and who's going to be Raz's favorite. So to yeah. have it be that kind of balance is well done, writers. Well done. To so me, Cinder is like a Mr. E kind of character to me. Like he's really cool. Mm. He has like some of the yeah. best action in the whole okay, show. Yes. But I get it. He he just he doesn't have enough substance for me yet, but I think that'll yeah. change. I think it's just because we haven't seen a lot of him yet. And I, I think it's because yeah, the marketing led us to believe we'd see more of him. Cinder's in his hunted era. Really... Yeah. Like, <laughs> hunted era. like, as long as they don't just say, okay, we're going to kill Cinder off next season. Oh, God. I hope not. Like, I want to see more of him. Not. That's why. Because yeah. I feel like he could do good stuff with them. It's just we yeah. haven't had a lot of time yet. I think the tournament will probably be his time to shine, too, which is also mm -hmm. really a really cool thing. So. Yeah, if they Maybe really do we'll a tournament in the next to two Ash. episodes. But Cinder is really cool. Oh, yeah, cool. I also I yeah, do want to know what happened to Ash, too, yeah. Uh, yeah, Cinder's really cool. I love his voice. I love the visuals and his action scenes. Um, and how worried he is going into part two. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. I, I do really like Cinder a lot. Yeah. Cinder's really cool. Jordana is also really cool. <laughs> like I did not expect Jordana to oh learn gosh. dark magic by the end of the season. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. What what does that what is her rocking back yeah, and like, forth mean? What, is, what, what has she seen? What, what has that? she seen? I don't want to oh, know, man. but I'm so interested. They're going to remember her now. Oh yeah. Oh, There's I no cannot way. wait. I was like I thought it was going to happen in these episodes, but no, I was wrong. Like the the rematch between her and Sora, I feel like we're gonna get a moment where Sora like rematches her and like Jordana's like super powerful mm -hmm. and she's like, okay, now I remember, like, I'll remember you yeah. now. <laughs> like, yeah, and they said that the uh, Forbidden Five were previous elemental masters. Oh, so, yeah. what kind of power does Jordana is... have with that kind of magic she was messing with, or was what was she hit with? That's also interesting, too, because if it's we don't know. For sure, of it, we don't know, right? If it's like a tournament of elements per se, like season four, like it could just be a tournament in general. So, like, <laughs> magic could factor into that. I'm, I'm assuming, like, and that's Sad also, team. oh, that's also interesting with Aaron because I feel like if Aaron ends up going the dark path, he could learn magic because that's oh, like Lord. a substitute for elemental power. If I'm, if I'm thinking in the right direction here, but. Uh, I will say, like, um, I remember I was in a call with Tristan and a couple of other people, and I know someone gave a very interesting theory where um, we're basically, as we've seen with Kai, unfortunately, <laughs> they only really needed unshattered, uh, like, souls to go to that weird realm place thing. So one of the, for, so each of the Forbidden Five could basically be able to leave that place. Yeah. And technically, technically, so this is the idea someone had. Technically, Bonzel could count as an unshattered soul, but the thing is, she's also a spell. So, what if they created this weird effect where, like, one of the Forbidden Five were able to leave, but as, like, a spell or something? Oh, and we haven't seen it yet. And they're. Mm. Yeah. That's gonna be interesting, too. Kind of like a Moro so, type situation. You leave the door open too long. Be afraid of yeah. what might what might come out. Yeah. yeah. So like it does it does kind of repaint the whole Jordana like. And it's possess like, and it's possessing her. Mm -hmm. oh, or if it's like yeah, it's like corrupted her in some shape or that form. That would be really interesting. I hope it's like a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Where it's like. I don't want this power. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's just this conversation is so fun to me because, like, I don't remember the last time I watched an Injago season or any time, and I had this many different theories about so many different ideas. Like, we've had big cliffhangers in the past, like, like, Seabound with, like, um, like, Nia being lost to the sea, like, Sons of Garmadon with the never, or the first round being teased. But it's like, those are like singular questions that only have so many possible outcomes that you can consider. Mm -hmm. This is like multiple plot threads at once being like, okay, how is this going to tie into this? And how is this going to happen? And how is this being set up for uh, later? And it's just like, 
it's what I love so much about the new structure that they've created, and I'm so happy about it. Like, this is yeah. probably the most interesting Ninjago discussion has ever been. Definitely. In like a long time. Agreed. I'm very happy about it. Would there be, you know, I feel like, um, I think Bendo did sort of mention his earlier, but like, I guess I would like to ask, what would you say is the shortcomings of this season? That's a good question. I think I think we already like uh pressed on some of them like uh the mana like the manifestation of the time skip. Yeah. And uh, how, yeah, that how that happened and like um cold, not coming back the way he did. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people who there's stuff that we want to see and hopefully we will know more but you know yeah, I, mean, I, have, I, I have saying? one. I have one. I have another criticism I would like to say. Okay. What? Okay. So this um okay, so we meet two dragons here, Egalt and Rontu. And yeah. you know, Egalt's voiced by Andrew Francis, which I think is, you know, that's very solid. I like that. That's yeah. a very solid choice. I think he plays the part as like this cynical, experienced warrior. And then we have Rontu, who if I'm completely honest. I don't think the voice matches with the character too well. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, I'm so like for me, it's just the whiplash I felt when I heard Rontu talk. It was just, it just bothered me. But the thing is, I just never, I just couldn't really get behind the voice all too much. I think because isn't it the same voice as Wildfire? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Bill Kazumi Evans. That's that was. I, I'm gonna have to agree with you in the fact that I think Kazumi Evans um, didn't do enough for me to differentiate that voice from Wildfire enough. Mm. But but other other than that, I had real no real problem with Ron too. I I think I think Ron too and Eagle like. I really like the dynamic of like one kind of like hopeful character and then another one being grouchy. I like yeah. Yeah, I, I like that just... dynamic between them. I when I, I first understand. heard when I first heard Rontu, I chuckled because I was like, wow, that's not the voice I expected at all. <laughs> and then I was like, oh man, she feels like the only way I described it in my head was like a cool aunt. To an extent, it was weird. I don't know. I don't know if I describe yeah. that now after like hearing her talk for long enough. But that was I the feel first I feel she it. left a weird first impression with her first few lines. They feel like the first few lines of a draft of the script that we did not see continue. Like, yeah, <laughs> her first like one or two lines are very different from how she speaks in the rest of the season. Yeah, and I think that was kind of off putting. But the actual performance, I have no issue with. And the design is cool as well. I think yeah. I overall those characters were really well too. done. It's just for me, um, you meant, uh, Crystal, you mentioned earlier about the, you know, it's the same voice actress and they, they didn't do enough to differentiate those characters, which I have to agree with. And it's just for me at the same time, I mentioned earlier how Eagle is this like experienced warrior and I didn't get that same impression with um, with Rontu because that is that is the connection that those two characters have, despite their differing pers personalities. It's the fact that they are very, they are pretty much ancient, like warriors and protectors of this whole world. It's just one had like a different viewpoint of life, while the other had a more hopeful interpretation of it and i just feel like they didn't really translate that experience well for rontu but i feel like that was translated much better through eagle i feel like they did in two scenes specifically the one where she's talking to lloyd and the one where she's talking to sora about whether or not um ryu can like do spinjitsu in the hoop thing in the diggies and i think those are the two scenes that where she shines the most as like a mentor character I mean, I'll agree with you there. It's just that wasn't my full impression of the character. There. I think I think what that character needed was more of a hopeful voice that conveyed a certain pathos. Like, 
like feeling like she was a little bit older and wiser, but still having that hopeful vibe. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But but other than that, I I have no real problem with Rontu and her spinjitsu is pretty. Um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I know I know people I know people um. sorta had like a. Like, we mentioned how, like, uh, hearing their voice for the first time was a little off-putting at first, or, like, yeah. a little distracting at first. And I know, like, some people said the same for, like, the sorceress. But for me, I was able to... The voice grew on me with the sorceress. Just with Ron, too, I just never could get behind it fully. I feel yeah. like they could have gone away with maybe having subverting Ron too as a character. Because, like, you know, you think uh, someone who's old and wise, like the old wise master, like Wu, like Eagle, etc. You could have subverted it, but I feel like they needed to push that subversion more, maybe. But, you know, yeah. it is yeah. what it is. I mean, at the and same time, I like... I would get used to the sorceress's voice because Tabitha St. Germain <laughs> is a goat. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. Oh my god. I mean, it's kind of interesting to me how Eagle is such, like, a... Uh, I feel like he's such a tropey kind of, um... Uh, like, uh... What you call it? Like, teacher, in terms of, like... The kind it's of things you'd expect during a training arc. Too. But, like... But, like... It is, like, um... It's done really well. And it's, like, we haven't seen that type of... I mean, like, Wu is kind of like that sometimes, but... He's yeah, di and, he differentiates and, himself enough. And I'm glad both of them do, because, of... like, I don't feel like... I don't know. I feel like every time we see a mentor character in Ninjago, they're different enough to me where they're not too, like... They're not just repetitive. Yeah. And I like his uh, connection with Wildfire. Uh, oh, two yeah. characters yeah. who every... don't necessarily like humans I, I got... and live with dragons. I saw a question earlier in chat that I want to get to, and this is a pretty good segue. Like, what is everybody's oh. favorite episode? I just want to... Like, episode 7, every single scene is so good. But especially anytime we cut back to the training and they're just talking like one on one with the dragons, every single one of those scenes is like really good, like top yeah, two. Every time, every time I go back to seven and nine, um, but I, I think, I think the crowning moment for me was uh, episode five. Um, the, the, the explanation of how Bonzel came to be. And, oh yeah. Um. The the finders being adorable and uh, <laughs> and everything going on with uh because episode five was also the cave episode, right? Or am yes. I wrong? Uh, yeah, and, no, that was that was episode more. three. I thought. That was three. Oh, okay, three. Okay, that was three. Okay. That um, was also really good. <clears throat> yeah, th those three, those three, and episode three. Um, I, I, <laughs> that I just can't choose between those four, but I think, but I think seven, I think it's like seven, nine, five, three. Oh my gosh. The odd numbered episodes <laughs> there. I said it. <laughs> they were I my feel favorite. like for me, it's probably, it's probably got to be 10 for me at the very moment. I have to rewatch these again because it's just hard to process a lot. It's just that with episode 10, it just really feels like everything's all naturally coming together because we have all these pieces throughout the season. We have like each of these separate storylines and story beats and such, like all in their own journeys and arcs. And then we just start to see all of that come together. And it's just so naturally done. But at the same time, just like that whole ritual thing that was going on and it's just just one of the most intense exciting and just absolutely riveting things i've just ever seen from a ninjago episode it just left me on the edge of my seat it left me excited it left me sad and like it also has one of the hardest transitions that ninjago has had where like we see them like use the gong oh yeah and that goes into the intro and, like, yeah and then it cuts oh. to the intro well so now it's good just, so Great. clean. I absolutely love that. Mm. So I had to go on Netflix really quick and just check all these episodes because lo and behold, I always will never remember episode numbers or names, but yeah. I can tell you what happened. <laughs> but, I mean, Netflix um, doesn't even have the totally names. Totally true. I know, it also does not have the names. Um, so I'd say five or seven. Seven because 
Seven almost made me cry because of the Kai Dio flashback. I'm sorry. Also, also because of the the wildfire and the wildfire and eagle. It was so good. So good. That scene between Kai and Dio was spoiled for me. Oh no! Who did that to you? I feel so bad. uh, that was such and, a big but shock usually, for me. Yeah, but but me for me, whenever I do get spoilers, I'm not technically mad about them because yeah. it, because uh, adding the context around the scene kind yeah. of makes it better. But the first time that mm-hmm. I saw that scene and it was spoiled for me, I was crying. Yes, I, Kev can attest. I there were like actual tears in my eyes and <laughs> Uh, I was around my sister at the time, and she was like, what's wrong? What's happening to you? And I'm like, Kylie, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah. That was such a good season it's one like... hair and the outfits and yeah. the... Oh my god. You know, now that you mentioned that, I feel like another... That also helps strengthen episode 10 as well, because we have that scene come back. <sighs> yeah, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, right yeah, after that's Kai true. gets hit into the, the portal, and we oh, now see man. Mia, like, learning Shatterspin just through that flashback oh, the, the and everything that's technique. been happening. When you can, like, get me this audibly say out loud, hell yeah, <laughs> and just from oh. your show, I'm sorry, so fucking good. And I just want to mention, that scene when we see Kai use, um, the rising dragon, yeah, that's why I meant to say earlier. Like rising dragon, like when that dragon's rising three played, I was just cheering. Oh, <laughs> like yeah. that was just top tier Ninjago moment right there. Oh. When Roz started chasing after Lloyd on all fours, that was probably one of the most oh, no. insane <laughs> pieces of animation yeah. I've ever seen from the show. Oh. Yeah, honestly, it just made me be like, man, I want to see more. Like, this guy's really out for blood, more, bro. Like, I will say, I do want to see, like, more, like, of a direct rivalry between Roz and Lloyd. And I feel okay. like we'll, I will get that more in part two with that action yeah. moment right there. That's just because something I just hope we see more after that. Hot take, and I just thought about this since we brought Lord Roz up. Um, I was... I was kind of expecting more out of him in part one. Yeah, for sure. Like I know they're probably saving it up. I think that's like, how I felt even, about Cinder too. But even like Beatrix in season one had a lot of impact as a character in that first part. I think more than Roz did. Is that a hot take? Or I would say I like Roz more already. But yeah, I think I was, Beatrix I, I just got that. more interesting plot to do. I think the whole on, yeah. I think the whole idea of Imperium as just a villain like faction, like how that was set up and how it was organized, is a lot more interesting than Roz's plan to like just take over the world. But Roz is just a lot more intimidating and fun to watch on screen. So it's like mm, agreed. They have pros and cons for me right now that kind of weigh each other out. I do think I like Roz more just because I like the design and the vibe that he gives off and how threatening he is. And a scene with Aaron is so good. And his fight with Lloyd is really good. Oh, I I just thought about something incredible, okay? I, I love how much we're talking about the hero characters um, in this era of Ninjago and how much and how far they've come. While in, like, previous Ninjago seasons, we've always discussed villains and how intimidating and the crazy stuff they do. But here, it's more subtle and they build up to yeah. their villainous tendencies later. Um, yeah, they don't that, just have, that's... like, villains that are chasing us every single episode and they gotta remind us that the villains are still there. Like, they'll go whole episodes without sure. even mentioning, like, Roz or something until a little cliffhanger at the end. Yeah, it's a it's a very character-driven series yeah. rather than Ninjago proper being we need to face down the villain episode by episode because they're doing something every single time. Yeah. You know, oh. to get to that one season end point. Speaking, I think that's of, really cool too. speaking of breaking Ninjago tradition too, something that like dawned on me as soon as the blood moon started rising at the end of episode seven, I was like, we're about to have a giant ritual with a bunch of villains, like a gang of villains that the ninja have to stop. And it's not happening because of fetch quest. Yeah. For the first time in ages, like 
you yeah, could I argue like, oh, they had to get certain things to get there, but like it really yeah. was just a slow buildup of Roz just doing evil things. It wasn't just I need to collect the three masks or the three orbs or whatever. What's it not the ancient artifacts? Like he had yeah. to he had to do, take multiple actions, wait for the time that was perfect, set up all the stuff, scheme in the background. Like there yeah. was so much more to it. He has almost, literally almost everything that he needs. All he needs yeah. is just one thing. And he, he only gets himself. it in, like, episode 8. And, <laughs> but funny story about episode 8. So, Tori uh, on Twitter posted up, like, claim a scene uh, for, uh, claim a scene with, like, a timestamp in an episode and come back to it later and see what you got. I put episode 8 in uh, 19 minutes, 35 seconds, and that's when Bonzel got captured. And I'm like, uh-huh. oh, no, take it back! Take it you back! Cursed <laughs> a, you cursed us. You cursed us. Idea. Now we need to do that for part 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just like, it, the season feels a lot different from what i'm because even last season like a huge complaint i had with giant size in season one was like i did not care about the plot set of the, of the like the dragon cores at all i thought it was like some of the most like no, forced like ninjago plot setup we've ever had and i was like yeah i was pretty disappointed to be like okay the show's made a lot of strides but we're still doing this we're still doing ninja need to collect three things or whatever to save the world or yeah. villains have to do this yeah. it's like for seasons yeah. like sons of garmadon it works as like a background to the things that need to go on but like i'm just so happy that we actually have a season again think, that's just completely structured differently in uh season one i think did a good job in setting up storylines that we were gonna see in the future because one of the dragon orbs was at the land of the lost thing yeah. where we meet bonzel and then the other dragon orb was at the administration where we first see jay and well, where was the third one the, it was in like the wildness somewhere like uh the love yeah, and Nail that strengthened, oh, and wait, that no. strengthened the, the bond between kai and wildfire that's yeah pushed forward in season two as well yeah and i i, I reckon like i recognize like it did all those things and i like that it's just to me it felt very for it's like a forced way of how they went about it oh okay that, that's yeah, like my issue 11. with it like it they they did they did they had that plot set up so that they could easily be like okay we need the ninja to go here here and here and do this and this and this and it felt very like contrived to me but like yeah, the outcome think... is worth it. I think they could have just went about it in a better way. And I think it, like that was my issue with season one. But season two already having a much more interesting plot set up and like everything happening feels natural. Like it feels natural for these characters to meet up. The only thing that felt a little unnatural is how Cole just managed to come back right when he needed to. That was a little like yeah. contrived. But other than that, everything felt like it happened because it like needed to happen and the characters took actions in order for things mm-hmm. to occur and not because they were told they had to go to these places <laughs> but I, mean, I feel like me, i think the only other contrived thing was putting bonzel in the box that <laughs> felt a little i don't know if that's contrived so. i think that's just dumb <laughs> i think that was just like i don't know what they i don't know what their plan was I, with bonzel i feel like they should have just been like let's just like hide her somewhere and not go straight like, to the wildness where all the done that. all the like wolf warriors are because they kind of just let her right I, there right to them yeah, it I just kind of like... it just made the characters just look so much more dumb than they needed to look yeah that was a bit that was also a, a thing i could criticize is is, is that particular decision making on on Cole and zane's <laughs> part and you're like yeah this is the perfect plan nothing could just going along with that idea uh yeah (laughs) but like i have to agree with you on what you were mentioning earlier with the dragon cores because not only did that whole thing start from the worst episode of dragons rising and still is the worst episode of dragons rising yes it it is (laughs) yeah but like but like the only interesting part about that whole journey was just visiting the, the different worlds and getting to know these characters more rather than the whole conflict with Imperium trying to collect those that just wasn't very interesting to follow as much but like it did do wonders for 
helping to flesh out those character relationships a lot more. And now we're seeing like the benefits of that through this season here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like Kai and Wildfire and uh, meeting the Finders and meeting Bonzo yeah. for the first time. And uh, uh, Cole and Nia and then the whole Jay sto- storyline. Yeah, like, and, uh, I agree it did a good job of setting stuff up. And I, for that, I, yeah. I'm, I appreciate it. And I think it. that's the point of season one. Yeah, yeah. It's season one, like, like all lives and dies. Because I don't think we, we would be talking about season two in such high regard if those things had happened. Yeah, for sure. I will say, it was, for me, it was too obvious that they were doing a lot of setup in uh, season one. Like, I can understand mm-hmm. like, a couple of stuff, like, with, um, you it's, know, yeah, Jay, Jay's cameo and such. But for me, it was just, it was just a little too obvious that they were winking at the audience, like, we're going to come back to this later, which... I feel like they did a little too much in season one. Here in season two, I feel like it's a lot more subtle and it feels a lot more natural and not too in my face about it, which I really appreciate. And, you know, I keep finding out more and more foreshadowing as we keep going on with this discussion, which is just... I kind of wish the thing with Paul and Jay was a bit more than a dent on a wall. I forgot about that. They never really. Better. Yeah, the multiple that monasteries was, is still. That was confusing. I, I still. What yeah. was. What were they going with that? Um, I, don't, I just I had really this agree. one thing with Jay. Jay exists to me. <laughs> Jay exists. I, I feel like that Jay was probably the only. My life. That was <laughs> about the only <laughs> thing it really does. It just it's more to remind the audience, like, yeah, Jay exists, Jay, but they never yeah, really Jay, explain well, why. I think it's also a double setup of like of like what's with the sixteen monasteries and like yeah. why are they connected? I think mm-hmm. I think it serves the purposes of of also being like, okay, the, there are sixteen monasteries or whatever, but like they're all they all ha- like are connected and like things that happen in one can happen in another, which is a bit confusing because the Imperium one looks nothing like the monastery Spinjitzu. But yeah, that's I what I mean. Just, like, it's just the fact stuff. that it literally has the same mark that Cole mentions. It's the same mark that Jay and Jay yeah. and uh, Cole made. That's I think is the confusing part. But that, that's something I think is just setting up for like, oh, we're gonna learn yeah. about what the connection between the monasteries are and why they're important. All right, let's let's do a segue. Let's talk about uh, Mysterium and uh, the sorceress oh, yeah. and that Bonzel scene. I love her i oh my i have so many comments on this <laughs> um, so um right off the bat five seconds hell not even that scene the scene with like Wu and bonzel gives so much like trans affirmation mm-hmm. energy i cannot yes. even when bonzel it. said that this is the body that just felt right to me i oh my oh, god yes. i felt it so much so good <laughs> Her, her, and Sora having that is is just so uh, yes. breathtaking and awesome. I love it. And then I love the the I don't witch lady, whatever. I don't I forget her name. I don't remember. Gallo- yeah, I keep forgetting her Gallo- name Gallo- because it's so Gallo- like Gallo- it's so purposefully no hard to pronounce. Gondolaria. I love her so much. Just even from an Gondolaria. aesthetic standpoint. Her rainbow hair lives rent free in my head, and I love her little mushroom hats. I can't even. But beyond that, she's just a really good character. She, being so accepting of Bonzo, made me that was also such a good sort scene. of almost you know, tear up a bit. Tear up dude, a bit. See, dude, episode seven had like three, like just like. Is that also episode seven? Yeah. I'm pretty sure, yeah, like, ep- that's what I'm saying. <laughs> episode seven is, like, the best episode in all of Dragon's Rising. It's my favorite. It's so it's good. Every scene is so amazing. It also has, like, the scene of, like, Aaron, like, angsting out to Sora, being like, don't make fun of me, Sora. Crying. <laughs> and, like, beginning that conflict, so like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, every single scene. And then also just has, like, really good comedy with, like, the, the, what you call it? The... Yeah, it's it's so cool that the Land of Lost things crew, the Finders, are so much of... Each character is just like an allegory of some point of the LGBT experience. That it's... Yeah, because they're, they're the Finders. They, like, find people, but they also have all kinds of journeys of self-discovery. Yeah. Which is... Mm-hmm. Uh, 
which is uh, Cole's whole thing, you know, and uh, and Geo's whole thing of not of being an outsider and uh, and then what we're probably gonna end up having be revealed about Fritz and Spitz later about being a formling or being comfortable with their version of being a formling. It's just every single character is gonna have that kind of plot, and mm. and I'm and I love that about them as a group. Yeah. Can I just say, um, the way the writers were not only able to have one trans allegory but yeah, also two, two back to two back with Sora. So there's gonna, there's definitely possible. probably gonna be more. Give us more. more. Yeah, and I just I just I kind of like the contrast with um. Like their interactions with their parents, you know, because we know yeah. Sora's parents are the worst parents ever. <laughs> meanwhile, it's nice to see an actual yeah, supportive Bonzo. parent in Ninjago for once. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Bonzo's so like so worried. So oh, worried. like if we like, see like, because if we see Bonzo and Sora interact and they kind of like discuss that and like Bonzo is able to like comfort Sora in that kind of way, that would be really nice to see too. Yeah. Yeah, and like. You know, I just it's, think it's. But knowing Bonzo's current time. predicament, I'm not sure <laughs> when that'll happen. It's very, it's very much, it's very much given what, um, Cole went through in the Royal Blacksmiths, mm. and uh, having parents accept you, yeah, for who you already are. Um, such great characters. Like I could go so, so I could go on and on. Like I already went so like on and on about Sora when she first had her story about Bonzel, like I could have a whole other discussion about serious. So good. Uh, I was I was crying. And and the and uh Gandalaria's performance uh oh, Tabitha's yeah. performance yeah. in that scene was so good. Uh, I it was so gentle and comforting. It it just felt great. Yeah. The magic stuff was also really funny. Like, I didn't expect them to lead into, like, just straight up, like, so much of, like, magic. Because we've had magic in Ninjago before. Yeah. But it's, like, a big focus point now. I, I didn't expect funny. to see Dorama. Yeah. Dorama's was... still Dorama. <laughs> <laughs> He's there. Me as a theater major is a very... Me as a theater major who loves being a stage manager, being depicted as a monster is wonderful. I appreciate the idea of Dorama. <laughs> I just feel like he's definitely like my least favorite Dragon's Rising villain uh, so far. I feel like Dorama is fun. I wish that they pushed that uh, section that he had a bit more. You could make so many yeah. funny jokes just with the fact that the ninja are stuck on a stage yeah. and it's Dorama. You could push that so far. I feel like they. It want... was a little. It was more of like. It gave me big like season one energy where it was like yeah. it was good. It was just like nothing outstanding was happening. I want to sequence. see them sing. Was, I want to see them sing. For it was no like goddamn I, I want to see dude Cole yeah. and Zane the singing duo would go crazy. Oh nuts. No, but like um, it was like a palate cleanser for what was happening in the A plot. Yeah. That whole episode was mm -hmm. just even more angst at the in the training. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah. angst is the big word this season. I love me some angst, though. We ask and they shall deliver, apparently. Yeah, I remember oh, I remember making a tweet being like, I hope this vision that Lloyd had in season one, like, messes with him and, like, causes him to, like, spiral into, like, like all these different things. And then they... Yeah, and it happened. And then it happened. And I'm like, oh, whoops. Sorry, Lloyd. <laughs> My fault. You ruined his life. <laughs> My fault, bro. But, yeah. Everything they've done, uh, I, I just, there's so much to praise about this season. It's just so good. It's, oh I don't even gosh. know what else to say at this point. It's just so good. Oh, yeah. I feel like Dragon's Rising. Wait, wait. Paul said Nia's name, I'm satisfied. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. I feel like season two has solidified me really really liking dragon's rising like i was yeah. i liked it in season one but i was like okay i'll wait and see but i feel like this is sold me on dragon's rising yeah like i'm so like well. a dragon's mm -hmm. rising super fan mm -hmm. now oh my god like like before i was like yeah dragon's rising is cool i'm so glad like what it is despite so everything 
I think it's a great direction as the potential would be awesome. Uh, but I'm still incredibly worried about season two, and I'm like always just gonna be nervous about it. So it kind of stopped me from getting too excited. Hmm. But like now, it's just like they've just reaffirmed so many of the things that I thought they were doing. They've like because mm -hmm. there was always that chance like in my head. I was always like, okay, they did so many things right, but like how many of these were just by accident? And I don't know how many of these were actually intentional. And now season two is like, okay, yeah, everything they're doing is intentional, and I completely like have faith in the writers now. Which could be dangerous, but I don't know. Only time shall tell. Yeah. yeah. I won't get as It'll invested as I was in original Ninjago, but like compared to like how I was like after Crystal Eyes and how I was for most of the 11 minute era, like I'm pretty hyped. Like I'm pretty interested. Yeah. It, the, soft, the soft reboot was definitely the way to go. Yeah. So that's just all the decisions that they made for the season are so good and the way they've structured it and the way that they're having them all yeah, and interconnect so, and it's so true to their characters and what yeah. they've been through already it's just proving that like they just they under they get it <laughs> like they get it they, yeah they get it <laughs> we have we have a team and we have writers and we have like a whole a whole crew of people who just understand ninjago like wholeheartedly like they know they know what show they're making. They know who they're making it for, and that just makes me so happy. As yeah. as someone who's watched the show and felt mixed on its quality for such a long time, like Ninjago's always been the show to me where it's like one season will be really good, and then one season will be really bad, and then one season will be okay, and then one season will be really good again. And now it feels like we're just we're in an era where it feels consistent. I I feel so comfortable in this position that I am now yeah. watching Ninjago. Yeah, like I, I don't think I've ever fe felt this comfortable since probably Hunted. Yeah. Um, it was like even around like Master of the Mountain into uh the island, I was like, where are they going with this? Yeah. But uh, that was, was like the Master of the Mountain and Seabound era, and the Sons of Garbodon era for me, where I felt like the most comfortable with loving Ninjago. And it, and now it's here again. Yeah, I'm which so I never thought would happen. I, I guess like after oh. after Seabound came out, um, I kind of had like the high expectations for Crystallized, to where I was like, this could be the peak of Ninjago, and I was like completely delusional, as a lot of people <laughs> were. But like, um, I was just riding off the highs of Seabound because that was like Seabound was the yeah. last time for me I felt like this, where I'm just like. Oh my god, the show is so, like, good back. <laughs> yeah, Seabound was the moment where I was like, yes, I want to join yeah. the fandom now. I want to go on Twitter and, and talk to people. But, like, as much as I but... love Seabound, and as, as it is still my favorite season, Seabound does not have the amazing foreshadowing, the, like, super deep, like, character stuff for everyone going on. Like, yeah. super well done, like, new, like concepts and ideas like it is it mm. is at its core another season of ninjago where dragons rising is on a whole nother level of just like taking things in new directions yeah. and just reformatting the show in a way that makes it a lot more interesting for both new viewers and old viewers and just like keeping it keeping the hype going and keeping me asking questions constantly yeah and that's and that's why i think this season of dragons rising might be in my top three if they yeah. stick the landing then in the next part because it, because of exactly just that yeah and that's why I, I that's why i have more faith in it because of the structure like the inherent structure of it like mm -hmm. because it's set itself up for so many interesting things and because it's allowed for like me to be like it's given example multiple examples of the writers just like setting things up and then paying them off in a really good way and knowing how to continue to elevate um and create more interesting mysteries and just like it's given me co more confidence than like say like just having a normal season in Ninjago be good <laughs> and just expecting the next one to be good because this one was good so the next one has to be good like mm -hmm. they they all right hello yo hello. Mesa. Hello, Mesa. i'm sorry to crash you're, you're no welcome say. welcome we've been expecting we've been expecting you, you. <laughs> we've been expecting you <laughs> Fine. Well, hello, hello to everybody. There's, there's it is so here. nice to meet you. Yes, I've, yes. I've been watching all of your videos. 
That is so kind to hear. There's so many people I'm like, I'm not familiar with. Thank you guys for welcoming me. I, I've seen you once and then I left the call. <laughs> Hi, I'm Konya underscore Crystal on Twitter. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Konya. I'm, uh, I'm Meso. Uh, my uh, name is actually Crystal, so. Oh, that's awesome. Cool yes. Mess. Very Thank cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, for, for anybody who doesn't know me, uh, three things. Number one, I'm sorry for crashing late. Number <laughs> okay. two, I apologize for the absolutely dreadful audio quality. I'm just now getting off work and I'm on my AirPod. And uh, for, me, for, for anybody who might not know, because I'm not arrogant enough to assume I'm super popular, I'm the de facto interim sensei of Ninjago Cast. Uh, the longest, yes, you are. Longest running uh, Ninjago podcast. Um, yeah, it's good to be here. Are we talking about how awesome Dragon? Yes, Dragon is? we we, we, we can't stop we gushing are. about it. We've okay, what do you think, Meso? Almost great praise for like an hour and a half. It's, <laughs> it's legitimately weird because I am used to being the guy who like finds something to criticize. Like I love Ninjago. Don't get me wrong, but. Usually I can find things about it that bug me or I like to have like a more critical discourse. Uh, I got nothing for Dragon's Rising. I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> uh, well, maybe like two things, but they're they're small. Yeah, uh, we've done, we've had it. small critiques, yeah. but like, yeah, like I think most of us are in the same boat. Like it's just- I'm, I'm actually shocked by how much I love that it. Same. Like, it's wild mm -hmm. to me. Um, yeah, I have yet to see your reaction of episode three, but I, but I, I'm, an, I'm imagining that it's amazing and you're awestruck. Basically, which is <laughs> it, 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 it's weird. I don't know, like it's like they flipped a switch or something. But uh, I, I thought season one was incredible, and I think everybody did. But I didn't really expect season two to elevate as much as it seems to be. And I don't want to like, I don't want to get ahead of the, the curve because we haven't seen the second part yet. Of course, we have no clue. Mm -hmm. Things could, things could fall off a cliff, but I'm, I'm doubtful of that. I'm going to be real. I think it's going to be fantastic. I, I just got a feeling in my bones, yeah. like every single thing about it from the visuals, the choreography, the lore, the writing, the dialogue, the character arcs, like every every single thing is just fantastic. I don't know. I don't even know what I could find to criticize. Like I have to grasp at straws, like <laughs> the masks are weird. Or in one episode, they say goodness a few too many times. <laughs> Shattering goodness. Shattering goodness. Or, or when they kept using the transformation scenes a little too much by the latter half. That, oh, that's true. Oh my gosh, and then the one time that the elemental mech scene happens and Cole's mech a leg happens twice. Oh my <laughs> they just reversed that. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Really? Yeah, I didn't notice that the first yeah. watch, but yeah, they just play the same like animation of the leg twice and they forget to like flip it, so it's just the same one. It's just the same yeah. clip played twice. I'll be real, it reminded me a little too much of watching Miraculous seeing those transformations. No, or like Sailor Moon. Yeah, my, my, my brain is just like, oh, it's just some transformations. And the other animation like error. Now. There was like the, the weird lip sync. Error. Like with Cole yeah. at the start of episode seven, <laughs> just odd. Yeah, and then uh, oh, yeah, that was there's little... then there's the uh, Kai hair thing with oh my that, god, uh, that was yeah, that was weird. Or well, was it nine? I'm not sure. But it was yeah, nine. it was like <laughs> okay, it was nine. It, it was that hairstyle, and then it wasn't again, and then that yeah. But that's it. What, We're just time nitpicking coins, at this did the point. Time coins make a slip up, and we got his like classic hair back for a second. Yeah, I I made a I made a tweet about that. I, I replied to somebody's post. It's like, what happened to Kai's hair here? I was like, nah, it was just blew back to season one. We love I, I also mentioned there. I didn't. I also mentioned I didn't like Rontu's voice too much. Yeah. See, I didn't either at first, but I feel like a few episodes in, when I started to actually get the feeling for the performance she was trying to give, I think it works. Mm -hmm. uh, it just clashed with what I was expecting from that character, maybe just by like visually, I don't know. I mean, for me, it was just, I think I had, I get what they were going for. It's just execution wise, they didn't particularly land there. And I just didn't, I wasn't able to separate like, cause like I know wildfires that 
Wildfire's uh, actress was the one who did it, and I don't think they did enough to separate those character performances there. I didn't even realize it was the same actress. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it's Kazumi Evans doing. Uh, I mean, hey, it, it worked for me. I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> but now that you've mentioned it, maybe maybe I'll notice on rewatch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like, uh, I, I made the point that I was like, yeah, it, the voice I think could have used a lot more pathos, like uh, the voice was more lived in, like uh, Egalt's felt like, uh, but that's just about it. Yeah, I thought the voice I, like, was fine. Like, like anyway. I, I, I said this earlier, but I feel like her first few lines were like a part of a script that we like, that they draft, like they got rid of, because like. The first few times she speaks, like, the lines don't seem really in character. But then once you get to know the character and she keeps, like, talking, like, it, it works What, you out. mean when she's, like, using lingo or whatever? Yeah. Or, like, yeah. like, it yeah. felt like they, they had a I completely different like, direction like, for her at the at first. And they just, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> they just kept that in yeah. from, like, an old script that is completely different from her character now. That's the vibe I, mean, I got. I feel like for me... The character, like the performance, kind of reminds me of those like small moments with like background characters or whatever, where you can clearly tell it was just the ninja voice actors just like like having a different pitch with their voice. It's just like mm. I like the big difference is like those were like a couple of seconds, while this is like a big character, and that's sort of like my issue with Ron yeah. too. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess, if, like, if you notice it, like, a lot, I, I can see how that's an issue, but for me, I, like, I didn't even... Really like, I think the line, like, I think she had good dialogue and such, and I like, I like the interactions with the characters, it's just, the performance itself is, it just didn't sound well, particularly right, 100% right. At, Meso, at since you're here, I wanted to ask if you can, if you can remember, what, what do you think is your favorite episode of the 10? Mm-hmm. I will tell you in just a minute. I have to be muted for just a minute. Hold that okay. thought. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Building up the anticipation. <laughs> but yeah. We have, oh. we have a least favorite episode? Uh, probably the uh, one with know. Dorama. Yeah. I have to agree. No, because it's not bad. It wasn't bad. It's just, and like everything in the A plot is great. It's just a B plot that's a little boring to me. You know, I like the B plot, but I think I like the B plot because it could have been cooler, and I thought it was sort of funny. Yeah, to the show it, it could have absolutely yes. nowhere. <laughs> that um, scene could have. I don't know. I feel like episode. Cooler. I feel like episode two might be my least favorite. I think. I think it's episode two. I mean, episode two had this. Okay, episode two I really like because it had the Cinder and, fight, which was like and, probably my favorite action sequence in the whole season. But then it also just had Lloyd like freaking out the whole time. Oh, I know. <laughs> sorry. Is it crazy. episode two or is it episode three? I'm That's not episode sure. Episode, 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 yeah. <laughs> episode three is the one where they actually go on the quest. I will say episode three drags a little bit for me in the first half. But once they get into the cave, um, that episode Bro, like elevates itself a lot. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think they spent a bit too much time. Like a lot of that episode, I was like, okay, just get to the place already. <laughs> but like, once they get into the cave and they start doing that kind of stuff, that's when the episode really picks up. So I think episode three is also I, really good. I don't know if I'd consider that one. I feel like I have to agree with well, Bendo that I feel like six is probably the weakest out of all of them. It's just more so because a lot of the other episodes are just much more tight. And I just feel like, I feel like the pacing for those are just so much more better and interesting meanwhile i feel like with the drama stuff while i don't think it completely drags the plot or season i just feel like it lings or lingers on it a, maybe just a little too long and it's just i didn't, I didn't care yeah. about it as much as everything else that was going around but i will admit i did have fun with it on first watch but on rewatch it was like yeah this is probably my least favorite episode <laughs> out of all of them yeah, I think it's just one of those. Like the the season has really good pacing, but the the only two instances where I feel it drags is when they're on their way to the the dragon thing and they're like in the room with like the weird tentacle creatures in the walls. Like I feel like that scene just kind of went on too long. I get the point of it is to show like Aaron and Sora working together and show off the new mech and stuff. It just it didn't feel like I, I was just kind of waiting for more interesting things to go on because it it was one of those sequences where it's just like here's a bunch of action and here's a bunch of 
set stuff, but barely any character stuff. So it's like in a season based on the character moments, it felt mm. a little weak. Uh, and then just like, yeah, when they were and the whole B plot with Dorama and them like finding, like getting the map and then going to find uh, Mysterium, it just felt a little drawn out like that. They could have just gone would... to Mysterium a lot faster, but I get why they didn't for pa to pace it out better. How do you feel about Mysterium as a realm? Because someone, I know someone in the comments mentioned saying Mysterium was kind of, I guess, it. But they mentioned it was wasted potential for them. I'm just curious. I think they're going to go back to it later. It's just right now, it's just yeah. like, um, yeah. we, we don't know anything about it. it. They really only went yeah. there just to meet um, mm -hmm. the, a new character. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they were on a time crunch. I don't. Kind yeah. Of, I kind of don't. All the time them. they spent there was like with um, that was that's another thing that I feel like the pacing was a little weird on was the fight between, uh, Cole and Zane and the uh, the mechs of the, I keep, why do I keep forgetting the, the name? Administration. Of the place? Yeah, the administration. the administration. Like I, the jokes were so funny in episode seven, and then they just oh, yeah. once they start fighting, they kind of just stop doing the jokes. So the whole like, entertaining sure. part is kind of gone. So it's just yeah. Ninjago mech fight and antics ensuing with that. And it, that kind of uh, dragged a little bit too. Those are the only three instances where the season somewhat dragged. And even in those instances, it was all very entertaining. Mm -hmm. Like, not Wait. as entertaining as the rest of the season, but it was still fun to watch on a first time. I think on a rewatch, those are just going to be the parts where I feel like, kind of feel meh about. But yeah. Is episode seven the one where. Okay, so it is the stuff with them having to sign the. But... Form yeah. And all that shit, yeah. Right? yeah. Another reason why episode seven. Episode is the best seven isn't the best episode. stuff in it. It's so funny. It's so heartfelt. It has three moments that can make you cry. Like wait, wait, wait. Is ep is uh? Ep oh my gosh. Is ep episode seventeen is the administration in the oh. last yes. season? Anything the, with the number seven, seven in it is peak. Be amazing. Guys, the Jago Dragons <laughs> Rising episode 27 is gonna be the coolest thing you've ever watched. It's the like. best thing ever. You you don't understand. I just, I just like how I just like the whole running gag with uh Zane like buying time by just pulling up some administration. Everything just has about the, the bureaucracy of the administration <laughs> is hilarious. It's and like they're bureaucrats. Mm, probably don't make very good slugs then. <laughs> I just like the whole thing with where he's just like, this is missing an appendix, and oh my but God. it's not yeah. in triple <laughs> Okay. If, that was so funny. If season three takes place at the administration, it's gonna be the funniest season of Ninjago <laughs> I ever. I want that. I want that to be honest. If we can it is gonna be the funniest. Season, funniest oh, I love the administration. Anything involving the administration is so so good. Oh, more Death Note references, please and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The. Yeah, episode seven is just so, and I, I saw on Twitter like someone quote tweeted like re replying to me when I said that episode seven was my favorite, and they were like, they quote tweeted like uh, I think it was Doc Wyatt saying that that was their favorite to write, and it should like I was yep. like, yep, that makes sense. Like this is yeah, okay. sure. even they yeah. even the writers oh, knew my. we cooked with this one. Okay, You're talking about how good episode seven. Yes. Is yes. Like, yes. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 team, I'm team episode seven. Did you see on Twitter yes. Doc Wyatt like so uh, a long time ago? He responded to someone saying episode seven was their favorite to write. Yeah, no, it was really good. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I was crying. Was... I was laughing. It's, How did we all feel about uh, Jay's like crumb of screen time? I think it was well handled. Like, I think they yeah, showed they just well as much handled. as they needed to. Yep. I, I feel bad about coming in late because I'm just like gonna rehash things. No, you're fine. We haven't really talked about Jay. Oh, we haven't talked about Jay that much. Yeah, we didn't yeah. talk about Jay at all, really. We talked a little uh, bit. Well, I did. I think I talked you, the most you about did, Jay. But you, but that is your I think we were only talking about Crystal. possibilities and not his appearance, sure. his actual appearance. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, then how about the reflection thing? Seems to be a theme for him. True. <laughs> the recurring, uh, recurring trend. Yeah. Here. Uh, Stop it... being something you're not, Jay. Stop it. I just think it's kind of funny how he's just like, listen. I'd like, no, no, I just like how the Bonzel, Bonzel, we, you think Bonzel's gonna be in trouble, that she 
Jay's like, I'm gonna, I'm, you better stay right there. And she's like, nah. -uh. Nah. <laughs> no. Make this, please make this easy for me. Just, just do it. Come on. <laughs> Don't make it awkward. Do I, uh, do I sound like more fiddly better? It sounds about the same. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. It's not, um, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jay is like a weird one for me because I, I don't know what kind of territory I'm stepping into. So. I apologize in advance. I don't really like Jay. <laughs> like at all. That's wow. not the biggest hot take of these days. Yeah, it's not the biggest hot take it's, anymore. It's not like, the biggest hot take on Twitter. Outside now. of Twitter, maybe. Half of, yeah, half, oh my half God. of Twitter hates Jay. Like, half of the Twitter loves Jay. So I, I, did, I did like Jay at one point. So I'm, I'm in yeah. getting like a I, time to Unre unrelated to my name, I, I actually do really like Jay a lot. So, I... <laughs> I have a... <laughs> so... Yeah, so, I... Uh, I go I go through it in, like, my PowerPoint, and I go through it a lot, is that they kind of made all of Mia's uh, problems in the early seasons, Jay's problem, <laughs> in Wild Brain. Um, where... He often like gets captured, and the ninja have to save him. True. Much, much that is like, true. much like uh, how Nia gets captured a lot in the early Ninjago seasons, and it kind of like moved all of that problem to Jay later on. That's true. That's a very good point. And, I have a uh, similar kind of feeling. It's like I I love Nia, like, and I love Jay. I love Jay, and I love Jaya. I'm a good, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Jaya. I'm not a Jaya hater. I know that it's mm -hmm. kind of popular to like dislike them nowadays in some circles. That's not me. I think they work well together. I think the problem, kind of like what you're saying, they made a lot of, uh, you know, the problems each other's. I think they, they, there was a point where they stopped writing Jay and Nia as mm -hmm. Jay and Nia, and they started writing them as Jaya. This very they were not, they very were not allowed to exist as people outside of each other. And the master stroke of splitting them up and splitting them up for seemingly multiple seasons is because that's kind of getting wiped away because mm -hmm. now they've been out of each other's orbit for so long. We're mm -hmm. getting used to them being apart. Well, mainly Nia, but and the the new fans or the people who are coming on to Dragons Rising aren't going to have that preconception mm -hmm. like at all and I think that's really cool um, yeah I just think I it's like how you mentioned uh, write them as Jaya considering Seabound literally name dropped that name in that yeah. yeah and it, like Jay became... was also go ahead CZ go ahead Jay was also already worse off, I feel like, than Nia, especially during Wild Brain, because he had half of his personality traits, like, stripped from him, to the point where it's just like, he's a ha funny joke guy, he is Nia's boyfriend, and he has high squeaky voice, and that is it. He doesn't do any tech stuff anymore, really, he doesn't do... Mm -hmm. it's but because he does gaming, but Cole do also does faster. gaming. Yeah, so I hope that they give him something more to his personality moving forward when they do more with him. Man, it's really awkward when the funny group. guy isn't funny. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, uh, the biggest crime. He yeah. wasn't funny. <laughs> but Dragon's Rising immediately, like, all the... Like, in Season 2, at least, like, every line he said was really good and really well delivered. Yeah, no, I mean, Michael, Michael Adams played is, like, amazing. He's so you good. Know, like, was, the yeah. delivery of the ending of Episode 7, that line where he where he has the laser pointed at Bonzel, I was like, I was like, yes! I love this! Keep it going, keep it going! Yeah, no, I mean, like, I'm, uh, I'm not a Jay hater. I want to see him come back, and I want to no. see him right, mm -hmm. but I, I, I kind of respect their, they're not jumping the gun. Because if they tried to integrate him, it would ruin the flow of the story. Mm. And I think uh, my theory, because this was, I don't know if you guys have touched on this, but back when they did the, the round tables and they were first talking about like Dragons Rising and the vision for the show going forward, there was something they said. I wish I had the direct quote. It's kind of irresponsible for me not to, considering 
I'm literally in the Lego Ambassador Network, so forgive me, but it's out there. Um, there was a quote where they were like, yeah, we want to like rotate the cast around occasionally. So we'll have some mm. people part of certain seasons and other people will be part of certain seasons, but we don't want to have everybody at once, you know, yeah. because they don't want to clutter things. I guarantee that's why they got rid of Kai because that's the mm -hmm. slot that now Jay uh, back into at least. Yeah. Jay. That's a really good way to do that. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that it everyone is. gets to um, Cause they have too many people otherwise. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to like yeah. muddy their writing. I guarantee the next one to go. Sorry to all fans out there. It'll be Zane. In sure, like of course Zane. Three or whatever. He'll leave to look for pixel. And then mm -hmm. that will like sure. give the opportunity for Kai to come back. And then maybe eventually like, you know, Cole will go live a happy life with Gio for a season. Yes, or so, please. You know? Yes. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. On the one hand, I get why, because I've seen some people sad about it because they want the, the all the old ninja back because they're like their comfort characters, and I have mm -hmm. a great respect for that because I mean I love all the ninja, but there were problems with the cast before this. Oh. There yeah. were there were too many people. Yeah, I feel Cole the same is way my about comfort Pixel. character. Oh, you're eating good this season. I, I'm eating all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you kidding? <laughs> Wait, when, like, people made my fun my of two Cole. favorite characters, yeah, my two favorite characters being Cole and Nia. Uh, I'm eating. Are you kidding? Honestly, no. like, when people were making fun of Cole for like not having a character, me included, what? and now he's like one of the best ones. I know. <laughs> like, give it what? time. Give it time. <laughs> Honestly, Cole and Zane are my two favorites. So to have them have like a little adventure together, the entire party of like part one of us just made me so happy. Heck yeah. go, like, we love it. My Sorry. glacier heart soared. Yes. I couldn't believe it. I'm so happy right now. Life is good. It's a good time yes. to be a be a Ninjago fan. Indeed. We are eating no good. Kidding. We were in Variety Magazine for like <laughs> what? Magazine, but, like you know, what whatever. even? <laughs> what is going on? There's too much peak. I can't handle it. It's okay. I'm sure we'll get a, a, a big fall again at some point. It'll be the okay. First Give us a few years. The day that the Dragons Rising era ends is a day that will be very sad. But Dragon as long fall. as it gets a good, as long as it gets a good ending, as long as they have like a a solid. <laughs> ending planned for whatever story they're oh. telling. I just hope yeah. they have a good yeah, idea Dragon of how long Ball. they want it to go. But Dragon I guess Lego is the true <laughs> Lego is the true uh, mastermind in terms of what happens with that, I guess. Oh. Watch us have like a Which big... kind of scares me. Watch us have like a big story arc season and it ends in a cliffhanger then Lego's like, you know, this is a good place to cancel it. <laughs> I mean, oh, look, okay? There's two things to consider. All right, and they're they're kind of like Doomer. One of them is a Doomer take, so humor me. Ninjago isn't in the top five most sell, highest selling themes anymore. They did the yeah. earnings call a while ago. It's not there anymore. That's kind of alarming, but at the same time, they're dumping like truckloads of money into Dragons Rising. We have the highest production values ever the highest episode counts ever. A brand new partnership deal with Netflix. I don't think it's going away mm -hmm. anytime soon. No. Yeah. Um, I think it's safe to say the money's, or the show's, the show itself is probably making more money than the, the show has by itself yeah. ever, right? Because like... Yeah, it's in. The, it was in the top four like the day after release. Even if the sets so, aren't selling as well, the show is making more money than it probably ever did on Cartoon Network. Thanks. And, and like the Ninjago City Tiny Mock are like one of some of the most expensive rewards. So Dude, they, I, I believe they fun. have like the faith in it that it can go longer than it is right yeah. now. And yeah, I feel like there's more people have more Dragons Rising's presence than they have in like in the years preceding that. Correct. Yeah, especially in the era when it was um, dropping off of Cartoon Network. Um, Rest in peace. Because that's, like, yeah, that's whenever I fell off, and then I came back because Seabound was so good. Oh, really? 
Yeah. That's awesome. And like, also at the same time, I just feel like another, I guess another factor to consider, I don't know how much this plays, maybe not as much as what I said before, but like, there's also still like a lot of people who grew up with those early mm -hmm. seasons of Ninjago and people who still like to make occasional viral tweets about, OMG, this is my child. Yeah, like the nostalgia yeah. tweeting is, is real. Yeah, there's yeah. so much so more nostalgia tweeting. Like, I'm now, waiting like for that. the big, like, Ninjago, like, <laughs> nostalgic comeback still, because, like... Yes, uh, it probably is, because there are so many YouTube channels outside of Ninjago That is true, it's already happening. That are, that are happening. Sea Bloom, for one. Um, I'm currently looking at one. They're currently in season one right now. It's yeah, there's a bunch of reaction team. content. They're having so, mu so much fun. I, so much reaction content. They start with the intros, and they're like, these intros are awesome. I'm gonna check it out. And then they do, and they love it. Like, it's a bunch of people I love people doing, like, like, reaction videos to the intros. Yeah. yeah. That's, just... That's how they start. <laughs> like, so many of the <laughs> reaction channels are starting with the freaking intro. I yeah, love it I because made... a lot of people do that for anime. Like, I'm just gonna Yeah, they treat the like, like yeah. it's an anime. Like, an anime. But, like, but, like anime have different songs. And then you do Ninjago, it's like the same uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... Okay, so I I made a TikTok about the Wakanda Forever and Seabound posters. And it made bank on TikTok. I think it had like 400k views or whatever. And then everybody's just like, season 15, what? Oh yeah, the, the classic. It's still going. It's still going. But now Dragon's Rising going. is like Dragon's Rising comes with it's like yeah, we're still going. Deal with it. Yeah, we're. In fact, here. watch it right now. On it's Netflix, on Netflix. All of them. And people are like, oh okay. Crystal, Crystal it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm thinking of making them my next video. <laughs> well, what? What? What's your next video? The poster the, thing. <laughs> yeah, the poster. Thing. <laughs> and then and then we copied Avengers Endgame the next. Heck yeah. Well, well, like, my first video will be Marvel ripped off Ninjago, and then it will be Ninjago ripped off Marvel. Ripped off Marvel. <laughs> yes. Also, so another good. thing to consider, the fact that Ninjago was just in Fortnite as just, like, a made Lego map, True. that's giving it even more publicity. Oh, yeah. The map oh, might not yeah. be very good, but, like, it's giving it more no, I mean, it's, mainstream I mean, appeal. It's a point of confidence that it's, it's obvious yeah. that Lego, like, its sales might not be the peak of what it once was, but it's an established part of the brand now. Yeah. They used the wording uh -huh. a few years back that, like, they treat Ninjago like an evergreen theme, which is like, mm -hmm. a, you know, city or technic or whatnot, not a story theme like, you know, Monkey yeah. Kid or Hidden Side or Chima. So it's kind of transcended that point mm -hmm. on, like, an upper and level. It's, and it's so much because uh, ninjas are cool. Um, that is true. And, can, uh, can vouch. They are cool. What if I said this made me think ninjas were cool? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I ninjas, no, I... ninjas were cool. Uh, and that's like the whole thing. It was just like, it, we have a theme for Lego about ninjas. We can make them fight literally anything. And we and, have. <laughs> and we have. So um, true. Next season, we're probably gonna have a whole bunch of people in suits. Um, <laughs> and, Ninjago uh, characters wearing suits? No way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are these <laughs> villains? They're just people wearing suits. What's going on? People Listen, wearing where's my dinosaur attire? Season, that's what I'm <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah there was like, another I thing think... I wanted to say. Oh, sorry, you go first. Uh, no, you can go. Yeah, you can. I was just saying, like, another thing that makes me kind of confident about Ninjago's future. Like, I don't think they're going to pull the plug anytime soon. Uh, Monkey Kid. I don't know how many of you watch Monkey Kid. I Monkey do. Kid. I do. Ben, 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 ben Doe, you may have seen an episode. I may have seen a few episodes of Monkey Kid. I might be a bit of a fan. <laughs> Honestly, um, I, I'm affected to Monkey Kid. It's now my current brain rot. I'm sorry. I, I have Don't not seen Monkey Kid yet. I'm still trying to gather all of the episodes in front of me so that I can binge them at some point. Remedy it whenever you can. Monkey yes. Kid, I I firmly believe, like, in my heart I of saw the intro and I was seated. I Monkey just have a lot of work. 
Huh. Funky Kid is one of the greatest Lego themes ever made in one key area, and that's like production value and style. Mm. It might not have the best characters, it might not have the best writing, although it has really good of both. There's competition there, but what it really has is like talent, animation, artistry, yeah, money, quite frankly, like <laughs> lots you know of money. That. And and you, honestly, I will see anything with uh, Sean Semmel in it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Show amazing voice cast. Anyone. Like, holy crap. Show Monkey mm -hmm. Kid to anyone, Lego fan or not. There's no qualifier. Yeah. There's no and the story sets are you have to tell. Really pretty. It's, it's just oh. good. And um, the reason why I bring up Monkey Kid is because Monkey Kid is, by all categorical like metrics, is kind of a failure. It's not gotten any kind of notoriety in the West. Most people don't even know where to watch it or can Ooh. watch it. The mm -hmm. sets have been all but removed from all retailers. Barely any stores still carry them, even Lego stores. Like Most of them are gone by now. But it's still going, and it still keeps going just because it's really successful in China, which is its main market. That did. Mm -hmm. But Lego's still making it. They haven't like pulled it yet. They're doing like what season five yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah. One, um, one of these days. I'm, I'm preparing. I'm preparing for season five. I'm getting Ninjago, everything. Ninjago. Ninjago might not be as successful in any one region as it is as Monkey Kid is in China, but Ninjago is successful in more regions as a whole yeah. than Monkey Kid is. Mm -hmm. It was widespread enough to get a theatrical movie back in like 2017. So like, yeah, and we just got a new comic book run. We're getting and comic exactly. runs like, yeah, it's always We're had mainstream more potential. Jitsu Brothers books. Um, well, it's just never been very accessible to get into. Besides yeah. the fact that like it is on Netflix. And what are you while, talking about? Like, no, the Lego Ninjago movie was the number one entry yeah, the, point. Yeah, it was a great entry point. And, the sun, and then everybody had access to Sons of Garmadon, which totally it aired at a good street, at a good schedule on Cartoon <laughs> Network. Totally doesn't spoil the. And almost arc didn't of get of almost didn't cast. get rating like trapped off of the platform. Like, like, we were worried that the show might get canceled completely. Yeah, dude. I just think it's funny. I just think it's funny how there was a tweet today, or like, I guess it came out yesterday, but I've been seeing tweets today about uh, how Cartoon Network really fumbled the bag with airing schedules. And I still oh. am of the belief that the reason so many people don't know Ninjago is still going is because Cartoon Network really fumbled the bag with airing well, schedules. Here's, like, well, that is know, such a big factor. Here's some, here's some Cartoon Network Ponya Crystal lore, okay? So, we love way... Lore. Yeah, so way back, I'm a huge Scooby-Doo nerd, okay? And I was watching Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated religiously whenever it came out. So religiously, in fact, that the episode wouldn't even air commercials that they were coming out until like a couple days beforehand. So you literally had to watch the Wikipedia page every single day <laughs> to get you know the schedule and whatever uh, every single one of those episodes are coming out and as we all know mystery incorporated is fantastic and wonderful and was the first one to have like an overarching story so it was literally important to know when the next episode was coming out because you would literally miss something that is so tragic what you just and, described and it, it is so tragic and so awful and Imagine Ninjago, like being a distributor and doing such a bad uh -huh. job that your fans have to frantically refresh Wikipedia pages. <laughs> yes, and Ninjago ended up happening like during that time period. That oh, so time you had to frame. keep track in on 2011 both. and 2012. So I had to literally keep track of both at the same time. Wow. And hey, it was it was a dark day in history. For me, <laughs> I mean, look, it speaks to uh, it speaks to your dedication that you're here in 2024. Well, Lesser people yeah. would have given up. <laughs> I'm I'm literally almost 30. I will turn 30 next year, and I'm oh, still dang. watching it. This is ridiculous. Dang, I used to being <laughs> the old man in the room. I'm only 26. <laughs> what are you I, talking I about? I'm 20 here. I I call myself. I'm so young. Help. <laughs> 
I call myself on Twitter the Konya fandom's mom. <laughs> nice. Because I've been around that long. Oh my well, hi, there you go. That's a funny Honestly, story. I feel like part of the reason why I kind of fell off with Ninjago is just because, like, the Cartoon Network airing schedule was just absolute, just grew to be more and more miserable. Yeah. Mm. And it's just, it just became like, okay, I should also mention when I was younger, I wasn't particularly that fond of, uh, I guess, more serious types of storytelling for kids' shows. That's, so I guess I should put that out there. But mm -hmm. at the same time, though, I still did love Ninjago. But at the same time, it's just the airing schedule was just like it just wasn't as accessible to watch Ninjago as it was for the first two seasons. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like, even by the time that I was able to find those episodes, either it was a few episodes ahead, so I already missed like the premiere and such. Or it was a few seasons ahead, so I just kind of lost interest because, like, I don't know the full picture, so why bother watching it? True. And I feel I like many off. other people kind of had those experiences as well. March of the Oni is whenever I fell off because, one, I was like, yeah. I like this ending, and also, it, it's really hard to keep track of this now. But whenever Seabound came out and everyone was talking about how good it was, I binge watched Mood. I feel the like Wild I... Brain era. I feel like I fell off of Ninjago at least like three times in like various areas. There was really? the tiny gap between like one season two and three, which isn't really a full fall off, but it was more like, oh, Ninjago's ended, guys. Oh, wait, no, we're not. <laughs> we're rebooted, yeah. it's rebooted now. <laughs> and then I fell <laughs> off again around Hands of Time. I feel like I watched like the first two episodes of Hands of Time and I was just over it. I was like, yeah, Understandable. I don't really know if I care about this mm. one. And then the movie was about to come out, and I was like, oh, that's neat, and but I never wanted to see it. And then around, I watched most of Sons of Garmadon, and then I didn't finish it. And then I finally came back around the same time that uh, Crystal did, which was for Seabound, and then after mm -hmm. Seabound. And then I binged yeah. everything. So Yeah, I, I never lost interest in Ninjago in the early times, even when the movie came out, because uh, I really like uh, surfing cartoon shows and because i like i really like anime mm -hmm. and uh Me too. that promo of sons of garmadon with uh lloyd fighting the ninja that was stealing the first oni mask yeah i remember that yeah and oh my god L lloyd in the vehicle and then they're Class. talking to pixel and i'm like pixel's back yeah! I, I think i probably would have like never watched Ninjago again if sons of garmadon wasn't as good as it was Bindo, no, did you fall no. off at any point? I, I kind of did. Like, I didn't watch Prime Empire for the longest time. Really? Um, that was Prime the Empire. like after season eleven was kind of like my fall off era for as long as like okay Prime Empire I didn't watch until Master of the Mountain came out and then I watched Master of the Mountain and I went back and watched Prime Empire. Really? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm, That's the only, only season only I skipped. Here, I'm the only person here who's never fallen off. Really? Yeah, really? but you I'm, also you yeah. also had like the Jago cast like, and like guy. TTV throughout I it. So about everything, and I'm yeah, the only one who has it. It was it was part of your job. Yeah, it was part of your job as a yeah. as a Lego. Yeah. No, you're right. Listen, like, you're a YouTuber. true ninja. You got all the Lego studs. Yeah, I I, 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 I fell off, quit. but but uh, <laughs> I I fell off. But uh, my Tumblr still had hashtag Ninjago is something that I followed every once in a while. I mean, like, so. I'm grateful for the channel because the channel was my excuse. There were certainly points where I didn't care as much, you know, but yeah. I, it, mm -hmm. it, it was never, it never got to the point of apathy. It never got to the point where I was like, oh, I don't really want to watch this. It was more kind of like how I approach uh, media like this, especially something I care about like Ninjago. Like, it's going to have a, t a bad day eventually. It might be next year. Mm -hmm. It might be like five years. There's going to be ups and downs, but I've seen what it can be at its height. So I kind yeah. of just, I, I go mm -hmm. with the flow. And if there are points where I am like super critical of things, which I certainly have been, that doesn't necessarily mean like I'm going to drop it for me. It's just like, well, that's going to be time when I get like hate mail in my DMs, you know, and I just, I ride away, <laughs> you know, yeah. like I'm, I'm, just, I'm just in for it. But I always yeah, come it back. 
Yeah. Yeah, and the and it was whenever it it was uh being more at, at its peak that I eventually came back. I think so, for me, you came back right uh, before they shattered your hopes and dreams. Oh. Um, <laughs> I will say. I want, I want you to look at my username and tell me <laughs> how, how much the thirteen-year-old me was like. Thirteen-year-old <laughs> me was like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. I will say, I think my fall off. I think the lowest point of my fall off was when I did not see the Ninjago movie in theaters, and that's the only Lego movie I have not watched in the cinema. Uh, I, the only then one again, I saw it was the first then again, movie, so. then again, when I did watch it, I liked it. I didn't enjoy it that much, though. And even now, I have conflicting feelings about the movie. It is the weakest of the four, but it is no, still a good time for me. It's Here's good what I'll say about the movie. Here's what I'll say about the movie. It was the best thing to happen for Ninjago, but it was the worst thing to happen for the Lego movies. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's, My that's hot take that people people yell at me for this, but I, I seriously mean it. Uh, I like the Ninjago movie more than the Batman movie. That's crazy. Really? That's My crazy. hot take is I like it more I than the Lego movie too. But it's not because I mean, the Batman movie is bad; it's because I'm not a Batman no. fan. That makes sense. Sure, I, I am also a Batman fan. Uh, I, Batman. Uh, I, as a Batman fan, I I can agree. I can agree that it really takes like the best Batman fans to appreciate what the Lego Batman movie did. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. The joke surrounding everybody uh, as a Batman fan and all the villains and Peak. Batman in particular Pete. Ab absolutely. Now, um, the thing yeah. I didn't really like about the Batman movie was that it kind of turned into like a Warner Brothers movie halfway yes. through. Yeah, <laughs> true. That's so true. That's that's the best take ever. Because that's Absolutely like even less valid. for me. Like I I I've seen some Batman. I don't. Yeah, at least like at least Ninjago no... has stayed in its lane. I had seen no Lord of the Rings. <laughs> what so kind of lane was like, that? Sauron's tower comes like <laughs> blast again. I'm just like tuned out. I'm like snore. Like, stay to this lane as in, like, we know what franchise we are. We're going to stick with it. I mean, yeah, it's, I think it's just for me, it's lane is just so generic and, as a friend put it, Americanized. I just did not care for it. Mm -hmm. it's, I okay. and many agree with you. It's very much a movie that works better in a vacuum than it does as a mini Jago quote unquote movie. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's really it's fun on its own. Like, I'll laugh at so many parts. I'll just have really. A, I'll sm like have a really fun time watching it, but if you were to compare it to the show or expect stuff out of it from the show, you're not going to get yeah. a lot of it. Like, yeah. like for me with with the Ninjago movie, it's just as a Ninjago movie, it falls flat. But as a like you know, just looking at it as a movie, I still think it has so many shortcomings that yeah. just it yeah. is still disappointing I like either way i, I find it disappointing in different areas me and kevin have sure. discussed this before I... I know we we feel very similarly about it i, I think, think it me. was more of a team movie than a lloyd movie. yes mm -hmm. no i agree uh, it should be just called that's, the Darmadon movie or my, something lloyd yeah, that's my biggest complaint <laughs> but i uh, i have to like commend like justin thoreau and dave franco um, well, i went hard crying in the booth Whenever they were recording those scenes, that yeah, man, so they they went hard. I they carried it. Yes. No, their performances the whole movie really was funny. carried on their shoulders. That that, that movie, in my opinion, on it change every time I watch it. I feel like, like I have yeah. to be in the right mood to enjoy it. I always like, like it, like but I like it for its merit. Like I think are really good. The artistry, the background yeah. design, the choreography, the voice acting. A lot of the jokes really work for me. Uh, mm -hmm. Just basically every line Garmadon says, I think is just hilarious. I, um, half my that is favorite, throw, but still. My favorite scene in the movie is whenever they take that lore of Garmadon looking the way he is and having that kind of power because he was bitten by a snake. And they ran with it and made it an improv bit. And it's so funny. 
this is my favorite scene in the movie. I was bit by a snake. No. <laughs> like, I, I just think I just think oh, it's kind of funny that? how like so much of the movie is just so thin and generic. Meanwhile, we have this like sure. really rich and like mm-hmm. like relationship between Lloyd and Garmadon that I was so invested in. And I feel like the only reason I like really enjoy that movie is because of those two. Like yeah. they really like they are the reason why I enjoy the movie as much as I do because they mm-hmm. it's just it's very funny, but by the end of the movie it's also just very it's also it can also get very emotional as well. Mm-hmm. I agree. Is that right? I, yeah. I always feel like a lot of the reason why it feels so I guess as Kevin put it, uh generic is because they had to strip away stuff for the, the general audiences out there. If they that's exactly what I guess put into yeah. it again. Yep. Then the at that fandom, point, people would be like, what are you talking about? What the more... fuck is this been good to? <laughs> yeah, the, the fandom had more expectations going into the movie than the people yeah. who didn't know anything about Ninjago yeah. did. Which makes sense. And it was like, and it didn't, satisf- it didn't satisfy the fans who did like the property enough. And um, I think Sons of Garmadon uh was the thing that got more people interested not yeah. the movie i mean i think the problem with the movie yeah. is it didn't really satisfy any like anyone yeah. <laughs> it didn't satisfy yeah. fans yeah. of lego there's movies why. and it didn't there's satisfy fans of ninjago i mean there's a reason why it's the lowest grossing movie out of all of them both yeah. domestically and internationally yeah true it did happen. It's like a lesson of trying to appease both sides and then not pleasing anyone. Just, yeah. yeah, it's so sad. And to loop the conversation back to the main topic, I think Dragons <laughs> Rising is probably the best way yes. to introduce anyone to the show. <laughs> yes, exactly. I was going to go on... I, I, I was gonna go on more Doomer tangents than that. Yeah, but like, <laughs> like, By yeah, all means, so feel before, free. Yeah, and Meso, before we were... Before you came back on, we were, we were talking about... Uh, yeah. Uh, how comfortable we feel in this era of Ninjago watching Dragons Rising than we have in a while. That's because there's like trust, and I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to be like. I, I I try not to be too disparaging to creatives because it's not sure. like you know when you talk about the old team, it's not like there weren't episodes or storylines yeah. or character beats from like Braggy Shoot era that I really enjoyed. So I don't want to be like, oh, you know, this was all bad all the time. Because it wasn't. But there was kind of a breakdown of, like, an expectation that you go in, you know you're going to get a good story focused on these characters. And, like, this is going to work. Sometimes we would go entire years and the ninja would just have, like, nothing to do. Because the focus was Mm -hmm. on, like, the 87 arc-specific side characters. No hate to my boy uh, Ben Thamar, but you know him, <laughs> him, him, like, him and we... Vanya and Racer Seven and Okino and Akita and you know all these people. Yeah. They really uh, we took were... a lot of the spotlight away. Yeah, we were also discussing how much we love talking about the hero characters in our main characters rather than just the side characters and the villains that we were previously. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's just more to talk about. There, there was a breakdown of of trust and expectation. You watch Ninjago, you know you're in for a good time. When I watched, I kind of, I, I kind of lived for the roller coaster of it, which might not be how many people did, but like, I was always excited to see which way it would go. You know, you either get a Master of the Mountain and a Sea Bound, or you get the Island, <laughs> or like, you know, oh, yeah. you're basically rolling the dice. But that's yeah. not good. That's not good for building like fandom you know opinion and steadiness people are nervous people are always like afraid like oh is this going to be the thing that gets complained about for eight months and people make 10 million like rant videos it's nice to just go into something and like i just kind of knew dragon driving season two was going to be good it was just a matter of like how good was it going to be yeah and um, that's nice i was like i knew it'd probably also, be pretty good but i did not i was not bracing myself for how much they would actually do with the things that I wanted them to do. Like, it was just, mm-hmm. it blew my expectations out of the water. Like, the the thing with Ninjago is, for a long time, people like me uh, wanted more from it than we were realistically going to get from it at any point. We wanted 
seasons long arcs where Zane wrestles with like the the guilt over being like a dictator mass murderer we wanted like ninja to die and stay dead and have consequences and leave the team and I think that that pressure for stuff that clearly isn't in the cards for a Lego show led to almost like an unfair expectation you know like people were more critical of stuff than maybe is fair because of what they want from it and i'm guilty of this at times i think the the beauty of dragons rising now like personally i don't know about you guys i've made my peace people aren't gonna die they're not gonna die they're gonna probably all live Wu's coming back fine <laughs> Wu is, Wu is all basically already back he might not be a part of the cast again but he's not gonna die Lloyd's not going to die. Kai's not going to die. Neo's not going to die. The show is going to be what it is. Does that make it bad? No. 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 Because they can write really good stories in that space. Like we're getting mm-hmm. this season with the mental health focus. Yeah. And the yes. stress and the anxiety no, and the, the feelings of inadequacy I... of Aaron and like the secrets with Sora and Aaron. Yeah, like yeah. you don't need, you don't need like death is nice consequences are nice i'm always going to advocate for it it's not the only good writing you can do i think they've raised the bar for the type of stories we can expect from these characters i think that's what's so good about yeah. it they're that's all character exactly. driven and what characters want and oh that's my all you need that's all you yes. need for good writing i'm i'm all for yeah. it we Kids haven't had any don't have to be like super have we? No, we haven't. But, no fake out deaths. No, it's like, honestly. Zane got, like, Zane got like powered down for a little bit, but he got right back up like five seconds later. I think it's. I think. Don't forget. Sons of, don't forget oh, the bounty crashing. Oh, yeah, of course. Jesus, I think Sons of Garmadon <laughs> might be kind of responsible for the raised expectations and what people wanted. Like, oh, for yeah. Ninjaga to be dark and interesting, mm-hmm. it has to be about death and how and grief. Yeah. And that's the only way a story can be deep and interesting. It is. And it, it took is. until it took until Dragons Rising for the show to go, no, there are other stories you can make deep and interesting that aren't just about death and grief and like consequence. Yeah. And it's kind mm-hmm. of the expectation, like if 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 Lego wanted a main ninja to die, it would have already happened. Mm-hmm. If we're all being like genuine with ourselves yep. and we're like being honest there probably is some kind of mandate from the top that the core characters who they put on the boxes have to be around, you know, Mm -hmm. that's probably what it is. So if we all as a fandom, like we, we make peace with that. We stop bringing it up myself included. We stop bringing it up as like a point of criticism and the writers stop doing death fake outs to try to like emotionally (laughs) manipulate people. I think oh. we'll we'll be in a better state where we can just kind of like move on and accept there's a lot of good stories to tell in spite of that. Yeah. I will say and, uh I, the best chance that the writers ever had of killing off a ninja was Zane back in season yep. 3. But it's even true. then, they immediately right after immediately. they put in the seeds for his return. So, you know, just it's just not going to happen. No. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy to me that I've been like reviewing Ninjago stuff since rebooted. I feel that's old. Crazy. We've been doing well, we've been doing our review stuff since that. It was because uh, I used to I never had cable, so I'm like one of the people who uh, sails the high seas, as it were. <laughs> but before before I did that, LJ had cable, uh, and LJ would watch <laughs> it on his TV, point his webcam oh at goodness. his TV. <laughs> And I would Aww. watch it on Skype with him through his that's crusty, crazy. like, Aww, multiple so levels of, like, camera. We've been doing it for that long. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Meanwhile, I got into this community, like, right after Seabound came out. Same. Oh, that's funny. I got, I literally got into the community, like, I, I've been lurking around for the longest time. Like, I was, I was listening to Ninjago yeah. Pass since, like, you guys started it with the Hands of Time stuff. And before that with, like, the Brick Feeds. But, like, other than that, I didn't really see much community stuff. Especially on the YouTube side of things. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make the content that I want to see from the YouTube side of the yeah. community. Yeah. It was like, whenever I started binging really the Wild Brain era, um, I ended up watching the reactions to Master of the Mountain with uh, uh, Wolf. And uh, 
yeah, yeah. But I was like, yeah, there's a community here. I want to be yeah. a part of it, please. That's that's so funny that you came in like right after you're like right doing C bands and uh, you got hit yeah. with the crystallized I title. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was like, let me spread some positivity about how much I love this show through through these video essays and then crystallized comes out. <laughs> Wait a I, second. I, I, I spent three hours with TV and Kevin. <laughs> My hype for Crystallized like contributed a lot to the me wanting to get oh, into Lord. the community as much as I did. Yeah. No, honestly, same home. though. You go first. Yeah, I didn't know anything about Crystallized. You can go. Don't worry. It's fine. Uh, I'll ahead, say one me. more thing and then I'm going to like go. dip out. Uh, my, my final Alrighty. closing thought. Uh, my, my greatest secret is I was never hyped for Crystallized. That's crazy. No. Ever. I, I envy you. Damn. I, Bindo, I'm, I'm so Bindo, jealous. We can't talk about leaks on the TTV channel or Keep the Peace. We're part of the Lego Ambassador Network. We don't talk about leaks. Right. But I read them. Yeah. I was in <laughs> tune with the leaks. The moment I read the leaks that said, oh, yeah, every villain's coming back. And the golden Lord. weapons are coming back. I was like, this is a mess. This isn't going to work. Dude, because at I that faith. point, my, I... my trust had been broken, mostly. They couldn't even tell, like, good character-driven stories with, like, one villain. <laughs> how were they going to tell them wow. with, like, nine? See, I think it's my downfall is how much I love Seabound and Mass of the Mountain. Especially at the no. time. Like, they were the fluke. They were coming off I years was... of mediocrity. Yeah, that was the thing. As I thought we were back with Mass of the Mountain. I was like, that was the we are so back moment. Little did I know we'd have to wait until Dragon's Rising Season 2 for me to yeah, my fully be like, we are so back. My two favorite yeah. characters who were so like neglected and not having any storylines by themselves for the longest time being absolutely amazing seasons and then just dropped an anvil on my head. I'm so sorry. Oh, Lord. Truly tragic. I, I'm so sorry. That's my greatest secret. And, like, I think that's one of the reasons why I came off, like, more or less okay. Is because I kind of knew it was going to be bad. But I did make the mistake of buying into the, the hype at some point And, like, oh, I watched the first 12 episodes. I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm, like, <laughs> vibing with it. I let my guard oh. down for, like, five seconds. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin. Have. Kevin, you said the other day it was like, oh, why did you hate crystallized so much? Uh, it's literally named after you. That's so <laughs> funny. And I was like, That's always gonna stop. be funny. Don't do this to me. It's terrible. <laughs> I feel like that. when you're like you were... leave a Ninjago. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Nah, you go. Uh, I feel like when you leave a Ninjago season and you have this like empty feeling and you can't really explain why, you know something went wrong along the way. Oh, <laughs> and that's how I way. ended crystallized. I was like, I think I like this, right? I like this, I think. My brain I tricked me into thinking I liked it for about 15 <laughs> minutes. I yeah. downloaded Sally's song on my iPhone after the 12 oh. episodes dropped. Because, oh, Meso, that makes so much sense Mark. judging the reaction. <laughs> Judging your reaction and how you like, because most of us had our cope period uh, of that, yeah. like after the ending, we were like, okay, but no, no, it was good, guys. Trust, it was, it was fine, it was fine. But no. you were immediately like, yep, this sucks, and I'm embracing it. Yes. It's just, it's just funny. Like maybe that makes me like a jerk or like pessimistic. No, like, I, mean, I, I think it's hilarious. Shot, but, like, it's like I just have a, I had a feeling, you know. No, I remember no. the Ninjago cast after Seabound ended. Uh, all of you guys at Keep the Peace and, was uh, and TTV channel was like talking about like, oh, which season is better, Master the Mountain or Seabound, and talking for about it for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And and then Crystallized happened, and then the Ninjago cast happened, and it was oh, it was so long. It was like, yep. I like yeah. feeling happy about Ninjago again. I'm yeah. glad I'm, yes, there. I'm, so, I'm, I'm so glad we can look back on these times and laugh. And thank look, you guys for yes. having me on. Uh, yeah. look at my, thank you for being yes. here. Yes, I would it was like so nice to, uh, to meet you. I will depart for now and free you from my bad audio quality, but uh -huh. hopefully I get the chance to talk to you guys again. Uh, okay. Keep, it was nice awesome. talking. Yes. It look was. look at my profile picture. I'm so stoked right now. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the dragons <laughs> are rising and the meso is uh, falling out of the stall. See you later. <laughs> Bye, meso. Bye. Thanks Bye, for being here. Bye. Yay. And here we awesome. are. Now there's four. Yeah. 
Uh, I think with that, I, I'm going to like start wrapping up the stream as well, but any any sure. closing thoughts you guys want to say since we went on a bit of a chant tangent away from the season but uh we can we can resume from whenever meso came in and was like i'm so comfortable with watching ninjago yeah. now and i uh, keep going i was Go going to say i <laughs> don't know if i've ever inherently felt uncomfortable in ninjago i'm gonna be honest like hmm. when you guys brought it up i was like is there ever a time that I could say that I felt, I'd say maybe the closest was crystallized and it was more so like an empty feeling. But beyond that, I don't think, maybe it's because of how I binged all the Wild Brain episodes like back, or seasons back to back and also not even in order because I think I went backwards for some goddamn reason. Don't ask oh. why I did that. <laughs> but um, beyond that, I don't really feel like I've ever felt uncomfortable watching Ninjago. I've either fallen off because I got distracted or bored and distracted by something else or i just was busy with life i'd assume but for, yeah for me the three pivotal moments of of an example of that for me would be after watching hands of time mm. and like hearing about the movie and seeing the redesigns for the first time and then hearing that the well, movie like wouldn't be anything like the show yeah. Yeah. and then after watching the first episode of season 11 <laughs> And oh, then I'm, crystallized. I missed out on the season 11 stuff, and I was lucky. I yeah. s saw, like, pieces of it, like, on YouTube, and it's like, what is happening in this fandom right yeah. now? I've but grown to, like, I've grown to appreciate the fire chapter over time. I've grown to hate the ice chapter over time. But <laughs> season 11 yeah. will always be, like, that yeah. was the warning. That was, the that was, that that was, was like, this is idea. not... This is not what I want Ninjago to be, and it wouldn't have it wouldn't be until Master of the Mountain and Seabound, and then it would show that it hadn't actually really changed once Crystallize rolled around. And then that was like the okay, yeah, this show really isn't what I want it want like want from it anymore. And then Dragon's Rising came out, and now it's everything I want and more. So uh, yeah, kind of crazy. I'm still how in Arden. Adamant, Arden, Arden is not a word. Adamant. Prime Empire defender though, so I will die on the Prime Empire hill. It has its issues. I will forever say that it has its issues, but I it's still a season that I like. It's like a comfort season. Oh, it's not the best season, but it's not the worst season either. It it's definitely the season. Uh, I think in the Wild Brain era that I pull a lot of individual episodes from. Hmm. Um, specifically the Okino one. And uh, yes, and the first Lloyd and Harumi fight, uh, the yeah. the side scroll episode, I like that one a lot. It's it's the season that I pull a lot of episodes from that I rewatch. It has a lot yeah, of like rewatchability for me. Ninjago Confidential sometimes. Because yes, Ninjago Confidential too. So, yeah. Kevin, are you one? <laughs> um, yeah, what are no, you I think I'm dead. Thoughts, Kevin? I'm like the oh, no. Kevin. Okay. <laughs> we killed no, him. Kevin. Ah. We couldn't handle it. Well, it's a fake out, guys. Oh, man. So speaking of getting like two years. Speak fine. <laughs> speaking of getting killed, check out my video. <laughs> yes. Yes, go check out Kevin's oh, video. Check out my video. Yes. Crystallize broke me since we kept talking about Crystallize. Yeah, yes. since it always yes. comes back to Crystallize, we still can't escape it, even when Ninjago is good. It'll take like t it'll be the Sonic of Six of uh, Ninjago. It'll take like a decade for anything. Okay, I don't know if I would call it. I don't know if I would be that <laughs> harsh about it. Well, no, it's not that bad in comparison, but in our mind space, it'll be the Sonic of Six. Of oh my god! Listen, Sonic of Six was unfinished. Okay, at least we can say Crystallized was finished. Yeah, it wasn't unrendered yeah. or something. We didn't. They get finished writing it a few months before it came out. Oh. Watch my video on why Colin Mia wasn't well, a bad idea. You know, actually, it not happening now. Is <laughs> the rise that. of Skywalker of Ninjago. That, yes. Which he would disagree with because he likes Rise, rise of Skywalker. Oh, no. But Rumi appeared. I have no thoughts because I don't like any of the Star Wars movies other than like two of them. <laughs> Damn. I still need to finish the rest of the Okay, to go back trilogy. though, to go back, to go back, uh. I, I love Dragon's Rising Part 1 so far. I'm very excited to see where uh, Part 2 will go. Um, as mm -hmm. many people said on Twitter, uh, this show is in really great hands. I feel like a lot yeah. of the uncertainty that 
uh, you know, Bendo expressed here about, you know, coming into season two, I feel like now we are all feeling very, um, you know, we're, we really trust the, the direction that Ninjago is going in right now. And now mm-hmm. that they've once again, like now that Doc Wine, uh, like Kevin Burke, once again, proven themselves with part one, season two, I just feel like now we're, you know, now we're just gearing up for hopefully another amazing part of season two. Agreed. And they're so passionate about passionate about Ninjago and what these characters can do. I have I have I have no I have no gripes so far. I can't wait till part two. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. We're all happy. We're having a great time. But I think with that, unless anyone has any last minute things to say, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here, by the way. We had like a bunch of people in the stream chatting with us. Yay! I would have liked to interact yeah. with chat more, but um, we, we had a lot I mean, this is the initial thoughts. We can always do the. Yeah. Yes. We I want to do an episode. I want to do an episode tier list at some point. Tier list. Tier list. I I want to be on the tier list this time. Yeah, I'll try to schedule that long term so that it's not as last Yay! minute as this. Uh, it, we can do it before part two comes out. And yeah. Plan it out right. Yeah. So exciting stuff. Happy to be a Ninjago fan right now. Uh, I'm it's working. So I'm already working on a video for season one, but it probably won't be out until after my macaque video comes out. So. Sorry, Ninjago fans, yeah. you're gonna have to wait a little longer for the the Monkey Kid fans to be eating good. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for uh, talking with me about this. Shout out to Meso for coming in and chatting. That was fun. And uh, yeah, goodbye everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Yeah.